Okay, we should be going. We are live, it looks like. Is that Jason but L? Stand, stand by, Omar. I don't think we're actually there. Yeah, we're not there yet. Now? So, hey guys, welcome to AV Educate, episode number six. Uh, give us a moment while we kind of get ourselves together a little bit more in the background. Uh, if you can, please share the stream. Share this out to anybody, your friends, your family, anybody you might know who'd be interested in it in the live view class. Um, again, we'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll, we'll jump right into this like always. This is a live Q&A session with Michael Bernstein with us today. He's going to be teaching us about the live view, giving us kind of a walkthrough of it, giving us a so, whole hey guys, welcome of what is going on with this, uh, with this product, how you guys can utilize it for the streaming world and what's going on in the industry right now. Uh, again, this is episode six. Uh, we're going to give you just a few more minutes to uh, share this a little bit. You know, comment on it. Let us know what's going on. Uh, again, thank you for being here. I'll give you a, a couple more seconds. While you guys are doing that, just give us a little shout out in the comments if you want to. Let us know you're there. Uh, whatever questions you might have, you can present to them now or, or present them as we're going through it. We'll get to them as quickly as we can. You guys are mean to me. So we'll address that, Henry, with you. I apologize that we uh, have offended you in any way, shape, or form. Um, <laughs> there is a complaint form. I will send you. <laughs> I'll, ma I'll make one right now. <laughs> it's called Hurt Feelings Report. You'll, you'll get it. Don't worry. All right, guys. Welcome to AV Educate. You're only as good as your crew. This is episode six. Today's date is Monday, August 3rd, 2020. Uh, we're here with Michael Benstein. We'll go through this real quick for you guys, uh, just to kind of recap of what we are, what we do, where we're coming from. Uh, so again, welcome back to episode six, the AV Tech Talks with Omar Colom, Chris Brown, Ed Wallach, where we come together to talk AV with you, the community, to discuss topics you have chosen. All right. Uh, my name is Omar Colom. I'm the creator of AV Educates. With me here is the streaming guy, or our IT guy, Christopher Brown as well as Ed Wall at the Brains of the Operations, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, <laughs> our special guest today is Michael Bernstein, the Live View operator. He's going to go over a session with us and take your questions as you guys bring them to us. Again, the format is simple. We go over the basics. We give you an overview of the product. You want to know about specific things. You ask the questions. We will dive into them uh, to a point, and then we continue on. Uh, so real quick, some of the house rules we have for the community out there. We go live to Facebook every Monday at 7 o'clock, Monday at the 7 Eastern time. All right, you can get notifications about it when you go live by following the AV Educate page on Facebook. Again, we're on Facebook. This will be on the replay side of YouTube. Uh, join the Zoom. If you want to join the Zoom room, you can text 407-504-7690. Again, that number is 407-504-7690. You text us that number. We will send you the link for the next one next Monday to join us on the panelists, to ask your questions and be involved with us in a more in-depth uh, scenario uh, like we do here every Monday with our panelists that comes back with us. Uh, due to the nature of streaming, there's a bit of a delay between what we see in our Zoom room and what hits Facebook. So give us a second to get to your questions. We do see them. We do bring them up. Uh, we are as quick as we, as quick as we can be, um, but there's a slight delay between us and you guys. So give us a moment to get what? to them. Be the sharpshooter in the room. No questions are too basic. AV Education Mission. Okay, well, it's help. seven on Monday, so I'm doing my web thing. Um, <laughs> no, there's people from the estate and technicians. Uh, next up is we don't know everything. So please, uh, we are human. So, we don't claim yeah. to know everything. We may discuss or show the way we do something. And it doesn't mean it's the only way, but it's the way we found that works uh, for one of us. So your input is also valuable. And please, uh, you're encouraged to ask your questions, share your, share your thoughts, your insights, your knowledge with the, us and the community. Uh, the whole session is a live Q&A. What that means is our guests will be discussing the topic for about an hour, and then we'll move to a more roundtable discussion. There's no formal Q&A section. The whole session, again, is a live Q&A. So don't wait until the end to ask your questions or to make your comments. Ask them as soon as you think about them. Put them in there. We will find the points uh, when we can interrupt Michael and let him know, hey, we have this question that came out. What do you think, X, Y, Z? Uh, and then shameless plug, grow, help us grow. The more we grow, the more we can collaborate with people. Michael has some great offers to show you guys today. Uh, because of this collaboration, we have to be educating through him and just being part of this community. We're able to offer these types of things. Uh, so the more we can grow, the more people can get involved with us, the more we can do this. Uh, and that's my spill. So again, I'm going to jump out of my screen here. 
I'll let Ed and Chris take over for me, and then we will introduce again, once again, our special guests uh, to you guys, the community. Great. Uh, so yeah, hey everybody, glad to see uh, see us here again on Facebook. Um, today we are going to be talking to uh, with Michael. He's going to share uh, about Live View. Um, I'll post some links in the chat. Uh, I'll help take some of those questions. So please definitely ask some questions. Uh, anything you guys want to know. Uh, Chris, you got anything to say before we kick it over to Michael? Welcome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming back again this time. Uh, I've worked a little bit with LiveU through a couple of friends of mine. He actually does uh, Jeep trail riding um, in the system that we're about to demo today. And he's going to show you today is actually super cool. Um, it's not, it can take literally a live concert venue in a backpack. So pay attention. Okay. So, uh, I guess I just go ahead and start, right? One second. Um, yes, sir. The floor is yours. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Um, a little bit about me. I basically come from the television film industry. Some of you know I do some work in the AV industry. It's not my first job. Uh, I basically uh, work for companies like NASA, SpaceX, and I do video streaming for pretty much every corporation that I work with. Uh, Live View is basically a really cool little system. Here, I'll guys show you a little, basic little about me. So basically, I do camera movement, camera specialist. I do a lot of research and development with different companies. So that's how I got into learning about Live View and things like that. The basically when it comes to video streaming, I do more of a custom streaming type system. So we'll do anything from a basic secured webcam all the way up to Q and a anything anybody needs. We're pretty much there to help program it. So today we're going to talk about how does live view work with your corporate events or your live streaming or anywhere you want to be. So basically the cool thing about live view is, is that you could stream pretty much anything from anywhere. And I'll explain more than what that means and how it works and stuff like that. Uh, somebody was mentioned live view in a backpack. Yes, there's different versions of live view. You can get the smallest one is this one, which is a solo. This thing basically is not much bigger than a phone. It's a little thicker because you have your inputs and your outputs. And I'll go over what everything is in a little bit. The backpack ones are more of the higher end units. The basically every television studio and every TV station in the country uses live view. They basically have what's called a bonding service. And I'll go into more in depth of what that means and how it works. So pretty much everybody right now pretty much knows you can use OBS, you connect to the internet with an ethernet cable, and then you stream out however you want. What if you want to stream from the middle of a field? What if you want to stream from a moving vehicle? What if you want to stream from a helicopter? All can be done with live view and I'll explain how it all works. It's a pretty simple system, very easy. There's only two buttons on the box. You can't mess it up. So basically what is live view? Live view is pretty much the solo system. It's a video encoder that allows the user to basically get their video anywhere on the internet or broadcast studio, television station. It's perfect for streaming from any location anywhere. You can use Ethernet. You can use a Wi-Fi connection. You can use what's called cellular bonding. Cellular bonding is a pretty cool technology. LiveView pretty much invented it. There's some other companies out there now that are utilizing it as well. So again, where can you use it? Pretty much you can use it anywhere. You can see on this, we've got news reporters using it. We've got uh, concert venues. Anywhere you need a connection. If you don't have an Ethernet plug there or any Wi-Fi, you take these two cell phone modems, connect it to the box. You can even use your cell phone if you'd like to, to use it for connection. And there you go. And then the next thing is, is how does Live View do this? There is a little bit of a magic. They're called, it's called LRT, Live Reliable Transport. So LRT is how Live View is taking this. They're taking the different connections and bonding it together as one stream. It's all done in real time. You don't have to say anything up. It's a very simple, basically you just connect, start, go. That's it. Live view does all the rest for you. The installation of it is pretty simple. I'll go through all that and show you how to connect the box and how to go to stream to anywhere you want to stream. It's not a problem. The, for, with Omar, we worked out a deal for you guys from the AV ed, ed, Educate team and members. So we actually are going to extend the deal, by the way, Omar. Um, I don't know. You don't know this yet, but we're going to make it a longer deal and a little better deal for everybody as well. 
Awesome. Uh, originally, the there comes in two different models. It comes in an HDMI model and an HDMI and an SDAI model. The HDMI model list is 995. Um, on this slide, it'll say 900. We just I just got off the phone with them today. It's actually a new price for you guys. It's going to be 875. So they knocked another 25 dollars off for you guys. Uh, model two is the more higher end model with the SDI available. List is 1496. We basically got down to 1300 for you. I'm working on uh, trying to get it even lower for you guys, so we could do that. The cellular modems are not included in this package. Nobody includes cellular modems in their systems because there's so many different carriers, so many different plans. And I'll go through how all the plans work and what's the best way of doing all that too as well. So with the cellular service, you can pretty much use any provider you want. You can use AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, Boost Mobile if you want, anything you want, Cricket, it does not matter. Uh, if you want a better service, LiveView has made package deals with the providers that you just can't beat the technology they've, they've come up with or the packages they've come up with. So basically what most people don't know is that cellular comes in different tiers. There's a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three. So tier one is pretty much emergency, military, government broadcast companies. There's no data limit, no cap, nothing. It's 100% on all the time, 24-7. There's nothing that's going to stop you from using it. Tier two is basically what your cell phone is. It's pretty much a monthly uh, contract. You do get, they say unlimited. It's not true unlimited. Yeah, everybody gets a cap. We all know that after 20 gigs or whatever, they start slowing you down. They throttle it, whatever. Uh, tier three prepaid, I say good luck because it's, it's not going to really work for something like this. Now, here's where some people start going, oh, but there's all this expenses involved. And yes, there are some expenses involved. We all know there's going to be expenses involved in anything you want to do in a broadcast quality system. So if you were to go to Verizon, you need to get an enterprise USB modem if you want to do it the right way. It's 290 bucks. AT&T's air card modem is 290 Solo has packaged dual modem kits and a triple modem kit together, and they've discounted it. The, um, or you can literally use any cell phone you want. Just tether it, plug it into the box. You're ready to rock and roll. Monthly cell phone service is not included in these modems. Uh, what I've seen is a, a couple of guys I've, I know that have the triple modem. They'll use the two USB sticks in the live view system, and then they have a little hub, and they'll use that for their computer to like watch Facebook or YouTube or whatever while they're on locations. Um, the other thing that some people kind of balk at is the monthly service. What's cool with LiveView is if you get the modems through them, you only pay the months you use. So you don't have to pay every single month. Otherwise, you go anywhere else, you're paying every month. What they did was is they did a package deal for $295 on a tier one, which is unlimited data, unlimited speed, unlimited usage. It is super fast. It's clean. Uh, I've actually used a couple of modems in my laptop on locations to do some stuff real quick. It's really cool. Now, I can get you guys a 5% discount every time you use it. So basically, if you pay for a month, you'll get 5% off on everything you do. Now, the LRT service is included with the modem usage. Uh, LRT, if you don't use their modems, there's a smaller fee. It's like 40 bucks a month. And I'm working on with them to get you guys discount with that. You don't have to use LRT. LRT is only if you want to bond different connections together. So if you're like in a place that has clean ethernet, don't use LRT. Don't use a cell phone. Just plug in the ethernet. You'd be ready to rock and roll. So basically what does that all boil down to is that this box, here, let me put that right there can pretty much get whatever video signal, audio signal you want to anywhere in the world you need to. Now, on one side, you have your ethernet and you've got a power plug here and then you got your USB plug here. The other side, again, you have, this is the HDI, HDMI model. My SDIs are out being rented right now and I'll talk about that a little more, which is cool. You got a headphone jack, you got a little micro SD card for future expansion and recording capabilities is coming very soon. HDMI, then another USB. What uh, basically the kit includes the starting kit, which is really nice, pretty much includes the Live View Solo. You get this little belt pack thing here, which got a belt clip on the back. You get all the cables you need. It even comes with an HDMI cable with a little adapter for like consumer camcorders or for GoPros or stuff like that. 
which is kind of cool. The other thing is, is I was talking about, I rent them out. What's nice about the live view is since every broadcast company, every studio uses it, NBC, CBS, they all use it. Right now is a pandemic going on. I have four units around the country that are making me money and I'm not even using them. They basically rent them from me. So that's a nice way to cover the monthly cost. The other thing is, is $2.95 a month sounds kind of expensive for some people for the internet costs. But if you think about it, you go out and buy two modems from Verizon or AT&T. They can also be two different modems, by the way. You can have one in T-Mobile, one in Verizon. So if one goes down, you still have the other one connected. Your enterprise package is going to start about 150 bucks a month. That's where it's going to start. You're going to need the higher end package to get if you're doing this a lot. So you're looking at over $300 anyway, just for that. And then you're not guaranteed to be on tier one. You're going to be on tier two where they will throttle you and they'll slow it down. The live view is basically packaged everything together that you need out the door. It's complete. It's simple. The, what I usually tell people to do is go ahead and set up your live view before you go anywhere. Cause it's so much easier than like, say you give it to one of the guys that works for you. You don't have to worry about them sitting there and going through the little joystick on the front here and having a program where they're going. Basically you plug it into your network. You can go log into this box and then you can pretty much go ahead and pre-program it. And all they got to do is maybe turn it on. That's it. And then hit the start button, stop button. You're done. The other nice feature is there's a little LCD screen right here. So you can preview the image that's going out to the world. That's nice. Most other encoders don't. For example, this is a Teradek video. The screen does not give you a preview of anything. This also does not have the bonding capability. This is only Ethernet or only Wi-Fi. That's it. This is a little bit of an older model. They do make a Teradek video go. And I've had some guys call me about it and ask, hey, you know, what's the deal with that one? It is a lot more money than the Live View Solo. It starts at $14.95 for the HDMI version. They have what's called modules. You can't just plug in a cell phone right away. Each module is $400. That does not include a SIM card or any of the internet connections at all. So you're spending another $800 on top of $14.95. That's kind of expensive, if you ask me. Now, what we'll do is I'll show you basically how the uh, the website works. Let me see if I can. There we go. I might be biased, but Live View is definitely cheaper. Uh, it is definitely cheaper, yes. Because the other thing is, uh, Teradek has a their version of bonding is called ShareLink, and ShareLink is forty five dollars a month, not including data usage, and they charge roughly a dollar a gig. Uh, I have a buddy of mine who wanted the Teradek video so much the go, and I was like, ah, uh, it's not going to be worth what you want, and. He's spending over $300 just to Teradek, not including the monthly cell phone service. He, he basically told me his last bill was like $800 a month for everything. And I was like, that's just too much money for some stuff. You want to make money. You don't want to lose money. So what I'm going to do now is I'll bring up the website. Basically, the website's really simple. What you're going to do is, is pretty much... Once you get a unit, you're going to basically create a user account here. You know, it's very simple, email, whatever you want to put in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to log on. And it's very, very easy to operate through the website. Right now, in the upper corner here, you'll see that the unit I have is not highlighted because I have not connected to the internet yet. The, here, I'll show you what I mean. So basically, right now, it's not connected. There really is, it's, I just turned it on with this little power button. I'm waiting for it to jack, to load up. Once it's loaded up, um, I've not set up the Wi-Fi for it. I've not set up the ethernet for it yet. Uh, like I said, the cool thing is you can use your own cell phone. Just take a cell phone, USB cable out right into here. Boom, you're now tethered. You could use your cell phone. I don't really recommend it because I've seen guys that use cell phones and they get a phone call and all of a sudden this gets disconnected. And if you're in the middle of a shoot or if you're in the middle of a live broadcast, you don't want to lose the signal. So that's why I really don't recommend using cell phones for it. Then all you got to do is basically take your Ethernet cable or your cell phone or whatever. I wouldn't use Ethernet today because I already rented out my, my bonding stuff. And then take an HDMI cable and you just basically plug it into the port right here. And then I'll show you what happens. So basically... Uh, here we go. So basically it's all connected. I got my HDMI here. My ethernet is here. 
the box is basically loading up to a previous show I just did. We just did a, a charity event for a children's art, uh, after school art type program. So we'll go into the website. Now you'll see it's connected. Very simple. If you want, this little cog up here allows you to change the name of the box if you want to. The serial number of the box will always show up in the bottom. So in case you name it something you don't know what it's named, you can always go back to it. Right now it's set up for 1080p 24 because that's what I'm sending it. And here is where your LRT is. You can turn it on, turn it off. It's up to you if you want to use or not. I'm using a signal, a single connection. I don't need to use LRT. If you're doing multiple connections and the cell phone connections, you definitely want the LRT turned on because that then cleans up the signal. So if one signal dies halfway through a stream, the other three are still running. LRT examines it. It's something like a thousand to 2000 times every minute. It just checks the signals and it recycles through all of them. This right here is graphics. They have a service you can buy where they can, you can do like lower thirds, a bug in the corner, I pretty much tell everybody it's not really worth buying the service. If you have a switcher that can do, you know, your keys, your low, you know, your downstream key, your upstream key, just make your own graphics. It's, it's cheap. It's simple. Don't waste money on an extra package. You don't really need. I mean, they, you can do it if you want. I, I don't do it down here is where the actual really matters. Now, this is what's cool about the solo, the live view systems. You click on here. And what it does is it comes up with a list of everywhere you want to stream to. So you got your Facebook, you got your YouTube, but then down here, there's presets for almost every place you want to go. Vimeo, Twitch, Boxcast. And what's also nice is you can do RTMP, which is right here. So you can basically set it up to go to any independent website, any, anywhere you want to go. And there's always, they're always adding more locations to this. The nice thing about this is, is, here's this thing called the locals mix. We just did this charity event, it had to go to three different places. It saved the streams. You can save as many as you want in here. Uh, you can delete them, change them, edit them however you want. Like for example, I don't need this one anymore. So I'll delete it and I'll say, yes, I don't need it. Boom. It's gone. It'll take a couple seconds for it to register. Boom. Now it's gone. The cool thing is, is that they're always adding more onto this list. I do know that right now they're in talks with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon to add live streaming to all three of those locations. Because hey, next Michael, year, yes. Quick question. Can you sure. stream to more than one place at a time? You can, but you can't. If you, there is a way, yes, you can do it. What we usually do is tell people to go to like Vimeo because Vimeo, you can stream to five places at one time, depending okay. on which package you get. This is more of, let's just get to one location. The, the other thing with this system is, is this was really designed to go to a TV station. It really wasn't designed for Facebook or YouTube. They added all of that because they know that people wanted to go there with a high quality product. So they basically threw it in for free. The, there really, there is a way of doing it. You have to go in and basically do a little tweak here and there, and I can show you guys how to do it, but it takes a little time. I won't show you today, but if anybody who gets one, I can definitely teach you how to do it. It's pretty simple. Um, I mean, it's simple for me. I've been doing it for years. I know how it works. Uh, then up here, you've got pretty much hmm. the My Device, which basically goes back to, shows you what the device is. The other nice thing is right here, you got a connections button. If you click on it, it'll take you a minute. It basically shows you what your Mac addresses is, your IP addresses for each device. So right now, these two are your cell mo cellular modems, the USB ports, device one, device two, they're not connected. So you're not gonna see them. The Wi-Fi again, I've got different Wi-Fi's up there. Uh, let's see, is it even gonna show up? Oh no, I didn't connect the Wi-Fi, that's why. Oh, there we go. So yeah, these are all the different Wi-Fi's that I've got already in there. So right now I've got Wi-Fi and ethernet connected. I can use either one. So if I use the LRT service, which is, Basically, all right, back here. If I use the LRT, which is off right now, I have right now I've got the Ethernet and the Wi-Fi running. So if the Wi-Fi goes down, Ethernet is still being used. The other beautiful thing is, is that I have seen, and I know other guys have seen, up to 50 megabit per second upload to the LRT because they're using four different pieces. So you're using your Ethernet, you're using your Wi-Fi, your two cell modems, and 50 megabit per second upload is such craziness for video streaming. 
in reality to do HD, you only need like three megabit per second upload. So 50 is nuts. The other nice thing is it actually gives you analytics. So it's not going to work right now because it's not actually on streaming. So if you want, we can go live somewhere. Uh, let's see. Anybody want to pick a location where to go? Well, you can get rid of Mixer. You can't go there anymore, but Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do not have a Twitch account, but we can go to Twitch if somebody has an account. Um, anybody want to go to their Twitch account? We can. If not, no big deal. We can always go back. Uh, let's do this. We'll go back. There you go. And pretty much it's very simple once you set it up. The nice thing about the box is you can, the ones that you save down at the bottom are quick links in the box. So if you're on location somewhere and then whatever the last thing you've done is saved in the box as well automatically. So if you just did a Facebook stream, that's going to be saved in the box. It's going to be preset to go to the exact same place again. Same thing with YouTube. Anywhere you go, the last is the first thing that the box is remembering. The, I do know that they are working on an update for the box. Uh, the other thing is all software updates are free as long as you own the box. The, one of the newer updates is going to be where you can save 25 locations. And then if you put in a micro SD card, it's going to be like unlimited, whatever space you have on the SD card. So that will be nice if you're in the field somewhere and you go, oh, I got to go to this place instead. The, uh, but that's basically, and then you have all your payment histories, your studio usage history, all that stuff. You can manage your destinations. It's a pretty simple, as you can see, there's not really much to it. It's just click on it, set it up and go. Uh, hey, Michael. Uh, yes. So we have a question on Facebook. Okay. Um, the question is, sorry. Uh, no problem. Do you find it a worry that the unit stops streaming if no signal on the HDMI or HD SDI is present? Uh, such as if there was a problem somewhere in the chain with the video signal, it adds another problem if the stream is automatically stopped. So does it well, stop? What it doesn't actually stop. What you can do is you can put a still in there and the still will basically just pop up when there's no actual video signal. So like you could have like, oh, sorry, technical difficulties, be back shortly, kind of a still, any kind of okay. still image you want, you could throw in there. And so you're never going to, yeah, you won't lose auto the switch stream. To it. Yes, it, it'll auto, that's part of that LRT where it's always looking for a signal of some form. So if you lose every connection, the LRT knows, boom, go throw this up there and, you know, make everybody happy for a while. I've never seen anybody ever lose a video signal yet, unless you have a bad cable. And I, I good example, last Olympics, they had 240, no, 252 units out being used at one time and not one signal was lost. Wow. That's amazing. Not with video or audio or the data or the stream getting back to the, they basically have a 18 wheeler that collects all the images and they send them to another truck to cut them all together and stuff not one was dropped the entire time. So it's, it's built for production. It's not really, it's not in the corporate AV world. It's really a production type device, but people use it in the corporate AV world, you know, cause it's, it's robust. It's built. This one's got like a four hour battery in it. I mean, this thing okay. is built to last. The other cool thing is, is this bottom, there's two screws on here. You can pop this bottom off and get a bigger battery you can also do what they call more connections. So if you want to add more cell phone modems to it, you pop this off. There's a module you put on. You can add two more modems and another battery. The, the longer life battery, this thing will run, I think it was like 22 hours on one charge, which is like insane. That is insane. I, I know it wasn't a full day. It was like it was somewhere almost close to a full day. But it's it's uh it is it does add a little more weight. It is a little bulkier. I mean, it's a battery. You're you're strapping to the bottom of that thing. Uh, what I've done in the past is on this DC port, I have taken. Uh, let me see if the cables here. Um, no, I don't have the cable with me. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, what I've done is I've taken this little cable right here, and I hope everybody knows what a D tap is or a P tap and just plug this into a battery, an Anton Bauer or a V-mount, and then plug it into this thing and let basically that battery run this, which will charge the battery at the same time. 
And then you can change it out and you can pretty much go indefinitely on a location somewhere. You don't have to worry about, oh, is there a wall plug to plug it in or not? That's awesome. It I does do a, come. I do a it? similar thing. That's awesome. I do a similar thing. I have like a, a little Panasonic handy cam that I take yeah, out for they, doing field stuff. You know just, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. I take a battery bank. Yep. Yep. Charge it up, let it do its thing. And while that battery's running, you can change out another battery. It's the way exactly. to go. Um, it does come with a wall plug, so you can plug it into the wall, and the wall plug will charge the internal battery, that kind of stuff. The there are different pouches for it, so if you get the bigger battery, there's a bigger pouch for it. The there's this other little clip, this tiny little clip that comes with it. It's a cable management clip. Everybody I know that has this either takes it off because they all say they break, and I've seen these. They they do break. It's just a little piece of plastic to hold your HDMI cable in the way. The I've uh, I've had one person that I know has dropped one, uh, a live view. It wasn't the solo. It was the more expensive one. It was the $15,000 version. And that one comes in a backpack and they dropped it and they didn't even lose a signal. The video is still going. They basically what happened was it landed on the bottom of it. It cracked the housing. They didn't break the battery. They didn't lose the signal. They were actually live streaming to New York from uh, Texas. And uh, they didn't even lose a beat. Nobody even knew. And it was very interesting because uh, the guy sent me a picture of it. And I was like, uh, how is that working? He goes, they never dropped anything. It still works. Wow. Uh, basically, live, you ended up sending them a new case. Uh, basically, basically, that's pretty much what he did. He broke the case on it. It wasn't really anything major. Uh, so they are, like I said, they are built. They are robust. Uh, we did um, a motocross shoot last year. And we were coming out of a helicopter. And we basically sent the signal from a live view, uh, 200, which is a little more expensive unit. They started about $6,000, that one. And uh, we were basically sending it down to a, to a truck down on the other side of this mountainside and doing a live sh basically stream to them. They were taking the helicopter shot and they were literally just filming the race that way. And they didn't have to worry about spending a lot of money on a microwave transmitters or finding a helicopter that could do satellite transmission or anything like that. And what happened was the guy, the kid that was in the helicopter filming, he fell out of the helicopter when he, when they landed, he fell out. He wasn't, I guess, strapped in the right way or something. And uh, he fell out and landed on his back and he landed on the backpack. Wow. And the outtake is really funny because you see the camera like film the kid falling on the ground. It was pretty funny. The, but like I said, it's, it's a pretty robust system. The other nice thing that live view does that most companies don't do is they do a trade in program as well. So if you ever want to get a higher end unit, you can trade in the lower end units for the higher end ones and have it like a credit towards a higher end unit, which is pretty cool. Uh, they also then will take your unit, refurbish it, sell it as um, a refurb to definitely third world countries. They have a program where they ship them overseas to like, I know like South Africa gets a bunch. There's, you know, like a couple in Thailand that they get and they, because some of those places have these special deals with the governments where they work out a program for it. So they don't just throw them away which is nice. Gotcha. Uh, I think, I think we had a couple questions in our yeah. panel. Uh, I'm going to, I saw Henry and then, uh, Omar. Okay. No problem. So Mike, is it POE? Power is it over what? internet? Power over internet? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand what you said. I'm kind of, uh, can power. you do, uh, can it do POE, um, to power uh, the unit? No, you can't do POE. Uh, not on this one. They, they were trying a PoE version. The problem is the power that's needed. PoE is not strong enough to send enough voltage through it at enough sustained rate because PoE is actually, it's packets of, of power. It's not a constant power feed through the entire time. So there's a little tiny batteries in each thing that's PoE that basically collects it. They, they are working on one. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon because that's not really their business. Their business is mobile. They really want to have something out in the world, you know, to them, when I talk to my guy at uh, LiveView, he even tells me that none of them actually use the Ethernet. <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, yeah, that's the last thing we use. We always use either the cellular systems or the Wi-Fi. So that's their whole point. They want something that moves. Uh, there's, I know right now there's two guys going across country using a solo that we mounted in a car for them. And they're doing this documentary of going around. And they've got an editor in, I think he's in Houston, that's collecting the footage live. And he's doing like dailies off of it. So again, it's not really, they, the POE is a great option. I love the idea. I just don't think they're going to implement it right away. Cause like I said, they're more on the mobile side of it all. Got it. Uh, I think uh, Omar, you had a question. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is on the Facebook side real quick. So Dan Dan Robson is asking, uh, he says, also audio running out of sync to YouTube after 30 to 60 minutes. When video processing on YouTube, it'll all be out of sync. Even though it started in sync, usually warns on YouTube audio bit rate not enough from live view to YouTube. Uh, boring stuff. You ever had that experience on your end? or, or That'd be the doing? first I ever heard of that. Um, Do you know what he may be doing on his side? I so don't just know. Just to couple that up, he also commented a little bit earlier that I caught. He's saying he's having hit issues with his solo. It won't allow me to use ready mode destina- ready made destinations such as Facebook or YouTube. It will only allow me to use RTMP destinations. It comes up as user banned from streaming. If I use a ready made destination, live use support hasn't been able to help him, he said. I, I know exactly what's going on. Um, we actually had that issue on one, one or two streams. If he's doing like concert stuff, uh they basically if you're doing a concert we just did a charity concert about a month ago with the live view and we had the same issue come up it was a music issue of of copywriting and we went to rtmp and it went through instantly youtube and facebook have very weird restrictions on it uh here let me uh let me get back into the mca is huge right now with everything going yeah with everything it's, going live stream right now, yeah, DMCA strikes have been huge. I know super popular streamers that are on Twitch that have gotten banned and had to fight for their account backs for DMCA strikes for four, from four years ago on their account. So it's yep. super huge right now. So it doesn't surprise me at all that if that's what it was, that's well, what it's it's not. Down. I'll tell you, it's not just that. Also, um, in YouTube and Facebook, what happens is is they want to they want to force you to use the lowest quality settings right off the bat. You know, we're talking like lower quality than VHS. I think it's like 360 or something like that. Lines of resolution. It's really, really small and waste of time. In the live view, so in the solo or any live view web interface, when you go into the settings, if you scroll down to advanced, you want to basically say force 1080p or 1080i or 720, whatever you're doing. Otherwise, they're going to force you to the lowest res possible. Well, once you do that, streaming sites, streaming network sites like Facebook and YouTube and things like that, unless you have uh, unlocked abilities, uh, like, for instance, Twitch, you have to be an affiliate in order to stream 72060. On Facebook, you have to be a level up partner, a level up program partner in order to stream 1080. Um, You can stream off the bat to Facebook now, anybody at 720p, 60 frames a second, Mm -hmm. anybody can. Um, And they limited it. They cut the limit where it was before you can only do four hour streams. You can now do eight hour consistent streams without being a level up program creator. So, yeah, but with the the live view system, it's going to override that. Well, what here's here's what happens, okay, with Live View, because Live View again was designed for broadcasting for television. It really wasn't designed for streaming. They've added the streaming full time like two years ago is when they first started pushing it big time. Facebook and YouTube do not really love stream encoders. They want you to use their software, their encoders, that kind of stuff. In the Live View settings, if you go into Facebook or YouTube and you force go to Advance and say Force 1080. Facebook now knows you're being serious. Same thing with YouTube. Then they, what they do is they release all the other options that you want. So you can turn off the copyright music. Um, I have an ASCAP BMI license that I've actually mailed to Facebook and to YouTube before I do live streams. So that covers that whole gambit. I don't have to worry about them coming and going, oh, you've got this music. Well, I have an ASCAP BMI license. I know most of you guys don't have that. If you're using a live view system and you go into the advanced settings on wherever you're going, Facebook, YouTube, that will basically not get you away from using copyright. But what it does is it now tells them, oh, you want to do something for, for real and serious. They'll open up the, the door a little bit more for you and let you do what you want to do. We had, like I said, this charity event we just did was a DJ battle off or something. I don't know what you call it, but it was a couple of DJs in a, in a recording studio and a couple of bands. And they were all doing this back and forth music. And the, within like 20 seconds on Facebook, they came back and said, hey, you know, this is all copyrighted music. And the funny thing about it is it's all music these guys already own it's themselves. So we had to go into the live view, into the Facebook mode and go into advanced. And right there was a button where you click it and it says, do you have copyrighted music? Is it the artist? Yes or no? You say yes, boom, it goes. And it worked perfect after that. We were doing 1080p, 24 frame after that, no problem. It's it's a really weird workaround. I know Live View is working on it with Facebook and YouTube to get it where it to be really clean and easy, just like a one button start. 
for some strange reasons, like I know it's, um, they had an organization page, so it wasn't like a personal page. And that was one of the other issues that they had. Uh, I've seen uh, a couple guys I know on their personal pages, they're using the live view solo. They do a lot of the uh, Comic-Con type stuff. They'll go out and they'll throw it in their backpack with a little camcorder or a GoPro on the shoulder kind of thing. And they were having some issues with copyright material as well on their personal pages. And I was talking to them and we went on to live view, talked to them and they said, oh yeah, go back into the advanced settings. And there it was copyright. Yes or no. And boom, it was, they were up and running instantly. It's, I think it's, I would love for it to be just start and go, but for some reason they want to push these things. Well, and I have, I, great, I have a great question from Facebook. And I was thinking yeah. that after I asked when we were talking about the 1080p mm -hmm. encoding um, with the live use solo. Uh, so as we all know, bit rate, bit rate it all comes down to it. And you're using modems from ca phone carriers and phone providers. Mm -hmm. Does it automatically adjust bandwidth for encoding? Um, what, for 1080p, 720p, or is it something that gets stuck? Like if you say, "Hey, I'm streaming at 1080p," but say your bandwidth drops, is it gonna is it gonna glitch and flag your stream, or is it gonna automatically downgrade to I, the lowest form? I'll tell you exactly how that works. If you're using the cell phone modems, you definitely want to use the LRT. LRT basically collects the images, cleans it all up, and basically re-encodes it for wherever you're going. So, for example, there's a guy right now in Miami for the Today Show, and he was only sending out at two megabits per second. But when you watch the Today Show, it looks like a satellite uplink. They're using the LRT service, and it's perfectly clean, perfectly smooth. It basically is a filtration system. Right, we in... won't get into that here. I want to know how you're doing that because that's, that's freaking – that's crazy. <laughs> LRT, like I said, it's, it's, it's a very cool service that LiveView gives you. Um, if you're using the 200, 295 a month package deal, if not, it's $45. It's like 40, $45 a month, really dirt cheap. And if you're using multiple connections, it is super clean. I was the, we just did this charity event. We had four megabit per second upload on one line. And then I did the Wi-Fi, and on the LRT interface, it came out to nine megabits per second, which is way more than you need for 1080p. 1080p. Roughly, you're going to need three to four megabits per second, and you should have no problem with that. Any other questions? I think from my uh, qu quick scan here, that is the uh, the last one we've had right now on. Uh, okay, the if Facebook you want, thing side. I, I can. Think, uh, I Jason can give Newman you. Had something to real quick. Oh, Jason, yeah. What does he got? <laughs> What's up with Jason? No, I was just going to reinforce something you were saying about the um the copyright stuff. I know Instagram is working on that, yeah. the artists, yep. because they do the verses and the Snoop Dogg uh, and DMX just had like 8 million views. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they don't want artists like that to get kicked off of somebody else's page because their material isn't copywritten for that page. So they're definitely, if Instagram's working on it, and I know Facebook's working on it as well, where they can figure out without somebody having to go into their settings and do that to figure well, out it's actually the artist. I can tell you what we do for Facebook. I actually have an ASCAP be in my license right. and I have actually given Facebook a copy of my license. Yep. So anything that goes through my system, they automatically know don't flag. They have, they actually have a master list of where they can flag you, not flag you and mine. They don't flag because they have a copy of my ASCAP be in my license and you can get an ASCAP be in my license literally I think I pay like 400 a year, which is nothing if you think about it. Um, again, what I do is I just return it and charge my clients that. Say, oh, we got to stream real, your music? Okay, we're here for five days. It's going to be like 200 a day. Two days, it pays my whole year. After that, it's all profit. The I, I don't know how the Instagram is working 100% yet. I know that YouTube and Facebook, you send them a copy of your ASCAP BMI. They put you on file. Done. After that, you can do it pretty much whatever you want. So, uh, I think Instagram is going to be doing the same thing. I don't know what level they're at yet on that, but hopefully they figure it out soon. Interesting fact, speaking of the, you know, ASCAP and all that, um, mm -hmm. Facebook with them taking everything from Mixer and doing everything and going more of a streaming platform, uh, yeah. Facebook and YouTube are working out agreements with their streamers. So you, if you're a content creator on those platforms, they are working out something where you can pay $10 a month and play whatever music as long as they are copyright 
through Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, that's the, the, I will say 10 bucks a month is not bad. I rather deal with the license I have because I can go anywhere with it. I can go do but a like concert for content yeah. creators. You know, sh- I'm talking little Facebook, little Facebook streamers. Oh like yeah, myself. no, you know, not yeah. not somebody who's doing corporate events. And no, I say, I say, <laughs> yeah, you know, ten bucks a month is nothing. I say go for no. it. You know what I mean? That's 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 simple, easy stuff. The the big thing is, is I already know the streaming industry is going to change within the next six months. The whole industry is going to change big time. Because now people are sitting there going, okay, well, we've got all these people doing this. Now, how are we going to control it? You know, and somebody's going to go, where am I getting my money out of it? You know, um, like, for example, uh, this is the Atomus Ninja 5 or Ninja V, depending on who you are. Atomus right now is not in the streaming game. Just remember what I just said. They're not in the streaming game right now. The Ninja 5 has this little data port in the bottom of the battery. You can actually add modules to it. You can do an SDI module. You can do an NDI module. There's another module coming out that I know about. That's all I can say. Uh, So if you have one of these already, you're going to be able to do some pretty cool stuff in the streaming world with this. And I'd say fourth quarter-ish. There's some other cool things coming out that are definitely going to change the industry. Uh, Black Magic. I mean, they're they're dumping out Ed, stuff left and right. Uh, actually, sorry. I, before we got too yeah. far, I didn't want to miss From- something on Facebook that uh, Hardy had asked. Mm-hmm. If you could show us where that still store can be inserted, and is this on the Solo U unit also? For it's, that that uh, that still store for if you lose connectivity. It's it's on every Live U box, and it's in when you set up your event you can put a still store in the event, in the memory of the event. Um, I do, from what I've been told with the micro SD port right here, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to store uh, more still stores as well. But right now it's when you set up your event, like a YouTube or Facebook, or if you're going to Twitch or wherever you're going, there's a little box where you can upload a little JPEG or a PNG and that's it. And that's in on the, uh, the, the GUI side, the web GUI. Yeah, it's in, it's in the web GUI. So you got to have whatever you're doing on the same computer. It's not through the box yet. Okay. Um, I do know that there's a new one, a new box, which is $20,000 called the 800. And that can actually do frame captures. And oh. it, you can, it actually has a seven inch LCD screen on it. It's pretty crazy. Um, it'll do 4K streams. It'll do 4,1080p record uh, streams. You can also actually switch on the box itself before within the, the 4,1080p records. It's a very, very insane box. It'll do H.264, H.265, H.266, all in one box. Uh, instead of two modems, it'll do 20 modems. It's a really insane box, but for 20 grand, what do you expect? It's got to have something power into it. Yeah. That, one, that one does have a frame grabber and a still store built into it. So if you have like somebody out there on the field and you want to have like a, a shot of that, you hit a button, boom, it creates a still of them. You can then use that. Uh, that box is really, really cool. It's 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 a great box. If yeah. I had twenty grand, I'd get one, but I don't have twenty grand to buy on a box right now. Right. Yeah. Um, it yeah. looks like Omar has a question, and then we have a few more from Facebook too. Yeah, oh, no yeah. problem. So there's two on Facebook right now that I want to get to, and okay. then uh, I want you to get back to what we were going to, and then we'll come back to the questions. Mm-hmm. So Robert's asking, and again, this is your opinion. Uh, will live you will, will live view replace sat trucks and ENG trucks for live? Uh, it already is. It already is. Yeah. Here's a good example. A satellite truck on average right now starts at $1,000 a minute. This box unlimited usage is 300 a month. (laughs) And you tell me, what are you going to buy if you're, you know, a TV station? Uh, Go out to any news gathering company or any news gathering person or anybody, and you'll see that they don't have a satellite truck anymore. They've got a little blue backpack for Live View. Well, you just answered the uh, Facebook question I was going to ask. Will Live View replace sat trucks and ENG trucks for live news cut-ins? It, it already yeah. is. Yeah. Um, what's really cool, which I didn't, I didn't actually show in this system, but what the TV stations have is really a cool system. Live View makes a, a decoder slash receiver, and they come in a two-channel, four-channel, eight-channel. So you could have eight reporters out in the field – you take this receiver, you connect it to your video switcher. You now have eight cameras connected out in the field, all on a 
on what less than what one satellite truck will cost you per day. You know, the, the cost savings is ridiculous for TV stations. In reality, um, there's a guy here in town who does a lot for Good Morning America. And he literally, he's, he's on live view every day. Every day he's using it because he's doing remotes for Good Morning America every day. And they, I talked to him a bunch of times. Yeah, I've helped him out with some stuff. I got him some hardware he needed, that kind of stuff. Uh, he borrowed a unit one time because he needed two for something. And literally, he's like, this is the best investment he ever had. He's like, I don't care what camera it is anymore. I don't care what monitor I'm using. This is what is paying me because I can be anywhere and send the signal anywhere. Uh, basically, I know that they're pretty much paying. Good Morning America, he was telling me that his monthly service is paid on the first day. And he's doing roughly five days a week right now with Good Morning America. And on top of that, it's all profit now after the first day because you only pay for one month at a time. Uh, he just, I just finally gave him the 5% discount code because he, he originally bought the box from somebody else and that's fine. At the time, I wasn't really involved with the company. And uh, so he bought, he's got an older unit, which is, uh, it's pretty good. It still works. It's a great system. He's got uh, one's called the 500. They don't make it anymore. They went to a 600. He wants to upgrade. I said, I'll help you out. Let's go. Boom. No problem. So now he's getting the 5% off. And like I said, Good Morning America is paying him every day and they, they love it. I talked to the producer from Good Morning America and she's like, this is saving us so much money. And she's like, and by the way, he just puts on his backpack. We can walk down the street. The truck can't roll down the street, but he can walk down the street. We can walk into a building. Truck can't go in a building. So I see satellite trucks are still used for major events like World Series, Super Bowl, things like that. But what's funny is, is the last Daytona 500, there was 25 live views out there going to the satellite truck. So there's different options you can do with it. There's just, I mean... You're not limited. I've actually rented. I said, I've got four of these out right now rented from NBC, you know, because they're running out. And I'll, and I'll just jump in and add on that real fast. My buddy Otto uh, did um, one of the first SpaceX launches or the, the first one they did this, this uh, year so far. Yep. And uh, he did it off of a live view solo. And yeah, I know Otto. And everything. <laughs> yeah. Otto, that's how I even knew about the box originally. And I talked to him and he goes, Oh yeah, do all that. And I, I, you know, dive deep in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys are into, Anything with Elon Musk or SpaceX or those guys right now, they're, you know, they use that on that that vent you saw on Facebook was using. Uh, it. Yeah, well, SpaceX owns two boxes right now. When we did the launch with NASA and the two astronauts went up, we had uh, 32 boxes out there because they did it. They wanted to do the drive all the way, and wow, they had 75 32 boxes all together. Yeah, they had 75 cameras on that one shoot to get them from the building awesome. to the rocket, and they used uh, it was 30 somewhat. I know they had 30 at live at one time. And uh, not one person lost a frame. Not one person lost the signal. Uh, a couple of them were just stationary. You know, you put them on top of a building, turn on, walk away kind of thing. Put a lockdown shot and go. Because uh, they didn't, they weren't allowed to run fiber everywhere they wanted to. And to run fiber that distance would have taken forever. So it was an option of send it wireless. Everybody's like, well, how? Live view. Boom. And live view basically gave them a package deal because it's, two astronauts going into space and it's Elon and it's NASA. And so they got a good package deal on the rental of all that, so, which by the way, if anybody needs to rent a lot of them, um, I can get you guys package deals on those as well. So like we've got an event coming up where it's 15 locations around the country and we're all going to live view them to one studio. So we made a good package deal with live view to get the producer a good rental rate on it. So we don't have to send people into space to get a, a rental package deal. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay. that, that's good. A um, so, yeah. couple of questions on Facebook. Um, yeah, no problem. One of them I think we answered, so I can probably answer and touch on this. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked what the lowest realistic bandwidth a solo will stream out. Because of the LTR, like you said, you have somebody doing Good Morning America, and they have less than two megabits of bandwidth, and they're yep. able to produce a full live stream off of it. Yeah. Um, the other one was, can you change the live you battery? Uh, okay. Yes, you can change the live view battery. The, like I said, they do make a longer life battery than this. It's roughly four hours on this battery right now in this little box. Um, right now, it's the they're toting the longest battery life on them. This bottom section right here does come off. There's two screws, one here and one there that hold together. You pop this off, you get another battery. And if you get the bigger battery, you'll get this will be extended out a little bit. If you get the, the same battery, boom, it's just the same cap but you'll get a cap and a new battery. If you get the bigger battery, you get a different cap and a battery. So you can do that. It's not something you can do really quick in the field. 
it does take like five minutes to do it because you have to unscrew the, the screws are like that long they're pretty much through the whole body of the thing and then what you have to do is you literally have to disconnect the battery you have to make sure it's off first also disconnect the battery reconnect the battery it's a small little plug then put the new cap back on put the two screws in you're ready to rock and roll the only downfall is when you get a new battery they recommend leave it plugged in for 24 hours before you use it just to make sure the battery is fully charged so it goes through a cycle so it gets a memory i guess um and the lowest bandwidth i've ever seen in hd was one megabit per second with lrt and it looked clean it was 1080 it was 20 it was 20 1080 30 frames per second and nobody on the other end knew that it was only one megabit per second because like i said lrt conditions the signal the audio and the video to be, keep it as clean as possible the entire time uh other companies that have their own versions they're not as clean I mean, they do work, but I just don't think the quality is the same as the live view. And like I said, I can sell you a, ter a Teradex system. I'm not, I'm not, you know, you have to get live view. No, you don't. You can get whatever system you want. I can get you a deal on the Teradex if you want one. I'm not going to say don't buy it. Um, Teradex does make some great products. If you're going to go into the wireless systems for on location to, you know, point A to point B, like a, to you to a monitor on location, Teradex Bolt's a great system. We use them on movies all the time. You know, pretty much every Marvel movie's got, Teradek bolts everywhere. They're not using the Teradek to stream anywhere, but they're using them to go on location to itself. Uh, Omar, looks like you have a question. Yeah, so there, there's two that we we kind of passed, and I don't know if you want to dive into these or not, Michael. But uh, people are asking about some copyright stuff. Are you okay diving into that? Or, or... Yeah, no problem. Whatever you need. So there's one question window. I want to bring up first while I look for those original questions. Someone asked in the festival scenario. Mm -hmm. What happens when there's that? This was from uh, Dean Robinson. What happens, what happens when there's thousands, when there's thousands of cell thousands phones? Of... Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. That was I, his question. I'll tell you exactly what happens. When you're at a, a festival, the live view is not on the same bandwidths as your cell phone. You're using what's called a tier one. Tier one is at a different frequency of every cell phone. So your cell phones are on tier two or tier three, depending on if you're prepaid or if you're going to, if you have a monthly contract, monthly contract is tier two prepaid is tier three. I always tell people tier three, good luck. Cause you're never going to get what you want. The live view. If you buy the cell phone service through live view, you are basically stuck on tier one, nothing from tier three or tier two will interfere with it because tier one was designed for the military, the um, fire and rescue for police, for the government use and then broadcast is packaged in the tier one because broadcast is considered to be an emergency service so what happens is is live view made deals with the government fcc and all these cell phone carriers to be on tier one um the other companies teradek you know all these other companies they don't have the tier one packages you have to use your own cell phone service so if you go through if you go through live view, you're never going to lose the signal in, in a festival. Uh, we did one. Uh, we were actually at a cell phone convention, which is really funny. And we were doing live streams from there and we never lost the signal. So I know it works for that. So I'm going to skip the copyright unless someone comments uh, now, because I think Ed and Chris have both answered your guys' questions through the chats here. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one I saw that was a good one. Uh, is there a way to... Is there a way of time syncing multiple solos for online switching? And that was by uh, Stephen Winsley. Yes. Um, you need a decoder system. You need their, basically, you need live use receiver. Like I said before, it comes in a two channel, four channel, eight channel. Uh, and you can always tie the multiples together. So you can do any combination of a two and a four and an eight. You can have two eights, two fours, whatever you want. And what you do is you basically are telling the live view to go to that receiver. The receiver then collects all the live views and then you can sync them all together in that receiver through a GUI. So basically what you do is you have everybody set at the beginning, you know, just do a clap if you could or a slate or anything. And then you can sync it all together before you even start doing your broadcast. I've got one coming up in March there. It's 15 locations. We're using uh, three eight channel receivers just to be in case, you know, we have to add more one goes down or something. And that's what we're going to do. We're basically going to have everybody sit there with a slate slate it and then we're gonna sync it all together in it and then the guy who's at the switching helm will just sit there and look like it's regular cameras nobody will ever know the difference uh one of the comments that came in on facebook was uh from hardy again uh i've streamed using the low latency mode to youtube 
and seeing delays reduced from 20 seconds to four seconds. I never thought that was possible. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, Hardy also needs to rent solo U units in the UK and is struggling to find suppliers. Do you have any advice for him on that? Um, if he sends me a message through Facebook, I can get him a guy in UK that uh, will, can help him out. Uh, the UK has had a little bit of a problem getting some units in there. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, I know Japan's got a problem right now getting some units as well, but I know this guy, he's got, I think he's got 10 of them right now that are rentals that I know he can uh, help that guy out. Now, again, if you're going overseas, the cell system is a little different. So you're going to have to get different modems if you're going overseas. So like in the UK, they don't use the same tier one system as we do here in this country. Got it. Uh, but yeah, anybody, anywhere in the world, I pretty much, I have a, I have a master list of who's got what through live view as a distributor slash dealer. I can so see got who's got what UK and you got Ireland right now. Those guys are definitely going to hit you up. <laughs> Not probably, a uh, Ireland doesn't have a tiered one uh, cell service system. So uh, which Island? Uh, I didn't ask, but I'm um, sorry. I lost your feed just now on the comments, but whoever is from Ireland, it made their comment. If you want oh, Ireland. In. Yeah. He's from, he said Ireland. Oh, Ireland. Yeah, no, they've got, um, yeah, that's Dean Robinson again. Dean okay. Robinson, yeah, no, they've okay. got a different setup over there. Um, it's not the same as England, but Ireland there's, um, there's two companies in Ireland right now that have a bunch of them out there that I know of. I know there's some more out there. I just don't know them personally, but I know the two guys in Ireland that have a bunch and uh, the systems are rocking. They they have the more higher end ones for broadcasting. They don't have the, the live view solos. I know one guy's got a couple 200s and a couple 600s, and the other guy's got a couple of the older 500s. So I know they're, they're definitely available in Ireland. I know that. Uh, Any other questions? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone asked, where are the battery available? Uh, it's basically only available through live view um, or through a live view distributor. Um, they don't have them for sale as an accessory anywhere because live view doesn't consider it to be a real serviceable part. It's only two screws. It's not that hard to do it. The, I can get you a battery if you need one. It's not a big deal. I mean, we can get you a battery if you really need one. Should be no problem. Cool. It's not on their accessories page. No, it's in more of the service pages. That's not open to the public. Got it. Sorry. Uh, no problem. Do multitasking. Um, hey, that's good. Let's let's leave a. I just want to take a break from the questions. I, mm -hmm. I, I sure. don't want to take away from the just the core of what we're going to teach here real quick, and then we can come jump back on this. So if you, if uh, if you had more you wanted to keep going with, um, we can come back to the questions in a second. Just <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That's pretty much the system. I mean, there's really okay. not much more to it. It's that's how easy it is. Love it. Uh, I mean, literally, once the box is literally set up, it's start stop. I mean, there's really nothing more to it. You basically push this little button right here, start and stop, you know. And I mean, you can go through the box to set up the locations and stuff. It does take more time. That's why I always say do it on the computer. It's a lot quicker because this is a little joystick. You know, you got to go click, 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 you know, Facebook, click, you know, it takes a while. But if you preset it before you go and do your event, it's on. Once you're on, start, stop. That's it. No, it's pretty I love it. I'm all about the q and I just didn't want to take away from your No, that's fine. And like. If anybody wants to talk about any of this stuff, I mean, I mean, I deal with, you know, Atomus, I deal with Live View, I deal with VMix, Blackmagic, I deal with a bunch of other companies. So, you know, I'm not just here for one thing, but whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm definitely available for it. I guess besides uh, Live View and uh, Teradeck that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. what other um, what other services and products uh, compare and and how do you rank them maybe? In this country right now, in the United States, there's only two real mobile systems. It's the Live View and the Teradeck. There's a couple other ones out there that just can't hold up to what Live View and Teradeck are doing. And I'll tell you the reason being, Live View is pretty much the first one out the door. And they went to all the networks first. They didn't even care about anybody else. They went to NBC and said, look, this is the system. They went to CBS, boom. So they basically created the whole entire ecosystem of how it works. Teradeck pretty much was more on the line of let's do wireless video sends on location to other people on the same location. So wireless video transmitters, receiver kits, which is the bolt series. Uh, what most people don't know is that there's only one company that actually makes all this stuff. It's out of Israel. 
you know, and it's, it's called Amion. They basically make all of this stuff. And what they do is they just basically make to different specs of different companies and you can't, they don't sell specs of Terra deck to live viewer back vice versa. So if you look at this box, it'll say it's made in, you know, yeah, made in Israel. <laughs> you know, it even says it on the box. Everything says that. Uh, the reason being why it's coming out of Israel is because the Israeli military makes the best video chip. The image processing chip for their cameras is the best in the world. FLIR, which does thermal imaging processes, get all their chips from Israel. Sony's Venice is all from Israel. They also make the best wireless systems for military applications. Amion is a company that makes wireless transmissions for the military. They now do public versions. Uh, DJI gets all their stuff from Amion as well. So the technology is there. It's They put money into it. The There are some knockoff systems. I just, I've never been happy with any of them. There's a company overseas in Germany that makes one, which is basically just a repackaged live view. And they actually buy them from live view, stick their name on it, uh, put a different case on it. And it's actually a live view box inside of it. Uh, the screen won't say live view. It says, I don't speak German, so I don't know exactly what it says, but it's basically, it's a live view box uh, with a German encoder and a German Wi-Fi, uh, not Wi-Fi, but and cellular systems embedded in there. So it's just, I mean, there are other ones out there that are cheaper, but I've come to a conclusion cheaper doesn't mean better, especially when it comes to streaming. I've seen guys buy cheap boxes all over the place. And I'm like, uh, yeah, no, thanks. You know, um, I know that there's a couple of uh, video game companies that sell like USB, cap uh, USB to HDMI adapters to capture stuff. And then they go through like OBS and I sit there and go, why? You're just wasting time. That's not, that's a toy. It's not a real video product. It's affordable. I get the affordability of it, but if you're going to do it as a profession, if I walk in with this box and you walk in with an OBS, who do you think is going to have the stick basically keep the client, you know, cause with OBS, you still got to figure a way to get it somewhere with this. I can walk around the building and still have a signal. You can't do that with an OBS. You can't do it with a cheap knockoff. A lot of these, I, I, there is a couple of knockoff boxes out there that are great for just Ethernet or just just Wi-Fi, but once you bond them together, it's just you're you're going to be hurting yourself. You're going to basically be pulling your hair out, going, "Why doesn't this work?" The best thing about Live View is they've been around for so long. This the Solo is pretty much what I call their prosumer box. It's very price reasonable for the guys that want to get into the business. You're not spending $20,000 on the top of the line box. You're not spending, you know, $6,000 for their smallest broadcast box. You're spending under a grand for this one. It's HDMI only. Uh, most of the guys don't need, you know, the craziness that the other boxes have unless you're doing the Olympics or you're doing Super Bowl. You know, I, I understand why they're using those higher end boxes, but for video streaming, that's it. I mean, like I said, I do have a bunch of tarot deck boxes. I got a ton of these things. This this video right here, I think I have like 20 of these. You know, they're great. I don't I don't get bonding. I just get Ethernet and an HDMI. And then I can just, you know, again, it's once you set it, little red button to start, little red button to stop. This has a, maybe a one hour battery built into it. It's great if like the power goes out, but if power goes out, everything's turning off. So this. What I have done with this in the past, this this will work with Wi-Fi as well. We have used this on, there's a hole in this one right there. So you can actually mount it to a hot shoe on a camera. And I've used it as like a really cheap wireless camera for a couple of events. I had one client is like, oh, we'd love to have a wireless camera. I'm like, um, okay, it's going to cost you as much extra. And we basically rigged this up to be like a fake wireless camera. There was a little bit of a delay because it's not really meant for that. We went through the Wi-Fi, but they were happy. They didn't care. The, uh, you know, then we even do stuff like, like I said, we even do stuff like this, which is a custom made box where we had engineers basically build this. It's got a smart card in it right here. And then we just send the smart card out to different clients. So there's so many different ways of getting out to the world. Now, the question is, what quality do you want to get it to out to the world? Do you want to keep clients? Do you want to do it as a business? If you're going to do it as a business, you got to have professional equipment, you know? Uh, these cheap little cam link dongles that are USB to HDMI. That's not professional. You want a, you want a real professional card. You want a professional computer. Um, I don't know if any of you guys seen on my, on my Instagram or my Facebook, my cheapest 
studio config streaming system was over 10 grand, you know, and I've got clients. I'm glad enough. I have clients that'll pay for that. So, but again, it's a professional system. I've got SDI in and out and everything. It's got a 20 channel black magic 4k switcher built into it. Uh, I've got the, uh, you know, Atomist Shogun studio as recorders for Apple ProRes. And it's, it's a Titan. I mean, I've got a, a media server in there. I've got a virtual set system where we do live green screening. So it's just, what level do you really want to have it? Where level do you really want to be at? You know, I mean, I, I don't say don't use those little cam link things and all that stuff. If you can get away with it, great. You know, I mean, awesome. I just know the clients I have, they don't want the cheap, you know, I call them tinker toys. I've, I've got so many of those systems. I've got a ton of that stuff. I've got a, I've, I've tried everything. I've been doing this for over 10 years and I've tried them all and I've got a box full of stuff. And if anybody wants them, you can have them. I mean, I don't even use them. They're such garbage. Most of them yeah, are. I mean, I've got an A10 mini pro, so I think I'm all set. I, you know what? I'm talking to you right now through an A10 mini pro. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what I mean? That's what it's, I'm using. That's what I'm using. That you know? topic. Yeah, me and Omar will take all the other stuff. Hey, look, yeah, yeah. That's what but I'm while switching we're on right that now. Topic, uh, you know? We are getting comments about the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. Um, do you have any feedback on the usability between using the Live View and the Blackmagics? Okay. Um, I actually work for Blackmagic as well. So uh, yeah, I can definitely tell you some stuff that they won't tell you. But um, the A10 Mini Pro is a great system for the price. You're not going to beat it for that price. You're not going to find anything out there for that price for what that box can do. Now, saying that, it is not a fully loaded system. It does have limitations. So if, as long as you know what the limitations are and you don't mind those limitations, it's a great box. You know, uh, We actually did, um, what, before the public got them, I got mine uh, about, uh, about four weeks before it came out to the regular public. And we did a test for them with the live view. So I went out through the ethernet into the, um, went out through, actually I went out through the HDMI instead of using the multi-view, we did the, you know, the program out, went into the live view and we were sending them signals. And we actually had it in the back of a van through the, out by Vegas, driving through Vegas with a couple of cameras mounted on the van and we were just switching live and it worked great. Uh, it's great for stuff. Uh, what also is really cool is most people don't know is um, there is a way to hack it where you could run it off a battery. <laughs> um, that's something I won't go in today, but if anybody wants to, any interest on how to do it, I can show you how it's done. It's pretty simple. Um, you're not cutting up the cables or anything. I'll tell you that right now. You have to buy another cable and there's a way to hook up to a battery. And we we got, uh, I think it was uh, close to six hours off a car battery. Uh, not the best way of doing it. Uh, I would definitely do an if a lithium ion battery next time to get longer life out of it. Uh, the van had a, a car battery in the back for some stupid reason. But I love the fact that they are getting into the smaller market. You don't have to spend $5,000 on a video switcher anymore. You spend sub 1000, you're ready to rock and roll. Now their competitor, well, not really competitor, but I kind of call them enemies. Cause what most people don't know is Atomist was born out of black magic. So was decimator and not most people don't know that uh, a lot of the engineers from black magic left and they started decimator and they started Atomist because Somebody at Black Magic is not really as nice as they seem to be to their uh, employees. So their employees left and started other things. Now, again, I was referring to the Atomist Ninja 5 earlier. This has the ability of doing four inputs and a five channel record. So you get your four ISOs and a fifth record. Now, remember, there's a data port on this. That data port, there's a module coming out where the A10 Mini is gonna have some problems. Can't exactly say exactly what it is because I'm on an NDA and I don't want to lose the, the right of them giving me some products and helping them out and getting stuff sent to me. I've got an Atomist Shogun 7 right there right above the camera that I'm looking at as my return. I've got I've got the whole product line, Sumo. I've got them all. It's it's a great company. Mike, the, you look like you shouldn't have said that because Omar was about to catch a fit there. He went like this. <laughs> uh, okay, well, what's, what's wrong with Atomist, Omar? <laughs> I don't have any, I'm not, I don't have any problems with Adamus. I like Adamus. Okay. Um, but when you said a uh, 10 mini, he said he went like this. <laughs> you know what? Like I said, for the price, you're not going to beat the a 10 mini. The a 10 mini is a great little box. Uh, I've sold a bunch of them to people. We've done a bunch of installs at churches for them. They're very easy to use. Once it's set up, it's literally what four buttons. I mean, how really hard can a, a volunteer at a church mess that up? 
<laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. They can. Um, but it's a very simple box. It's very easy to use. It's very small, portable. Uh, any of you guys that are in the AV world that wear the BDU pants with a big pocket, it fits in that pocket. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's so small and very easy. My only thing I don't like about the A10 mini product line is that there's no SDI functions yet. <laughs> I'm saying that yet, because I, I do know what's coming down the line. <laughs> Again, I got some NDAs. I just really can't exactly say exactly what's happening, but uh, the one told me in December. Um, let's just say, uh huh. Okay, <laughs> that's where I have to leave it at. I really can't say exactly what's happening with it. Uh, I do know that um, there's some other cool products coming down. Uh, right now. For like I said, you can't beat the A10 Mini for what it is. It's a great little box. The fact that the Pro has got the streaming built in is beautiful. Uh, I think they kind of blew it with bringing out the regular one first. They should never even made that regular one. They should just start off with the Pro in the first place, and which is kind of funny because they had the Pro sitting there, but it wasn't like ready for production. Whatever. It's it's a money thing. We all know that they wanted to make more money. Um, the regular Mini is still a great little box. I just didn't like the fact that. Within a year, was it maybe not even six months, I think, they brought up the second one, the Pro. And all these guys that bought the regular one for $295, what it was, yeah, $295. All of a sudden, they go out and go, oh, $595 for another one that has recording, and it now has, you know, a multi-viewer and all that stuff. And, uh, I mean, the audio input, the capability on it alone is amazing. I mean, I'm not an audio guy, and there's stuff in there I look at it and go, uh, cool, awesome. Don't know how to use it, but awesome. Not an audio guy. Um They've definitely added a lot to it. Um, I do know that, like I said, the only thing I wish they had when they first came out with was an HDMI version and an SDI version because I most of my stuff is, a, is SDI. I mean, I yeah, my GoPro is HDMI, but I convert to SDI when I put it into a switcher. But otherwise, it's a great little box. I do know that Roland makes some boxes now as well that are used for streaming. Um, I've never really been a, a big Roland supporter because I know where they came from. They came from the video DJ market. And I just never really felt that their system was broadcast ready. And I do a lot of broadcast stuff. And if you put a roll in through a vector scope waveform monitor and you get a real engineer to look at it, you'll see that it's not actually true resolution the entire time. It fluctuates. Uh, not by a lot. We're talking maybe four lines of resolution. But somebody who's picky, they don't want that. The average person wouldn't be able to tell the difference uh black magic is pretty much rock solid the entire time and that was like when final cut came out it was never resolution true that's why i was like i don't use that um but yeah it's there's there's more boxes coming down the line there's one called a10 not a tem it's a t e n uh it's actually a pretty interesting little box it's got a little seven inch touch screen it's a uh, a thousand bucks it's very interesting the way it works it's sort of like the analog wave, the old analog wave with the layers where you have to like turn a layer on and off and you can't, and it's kind of weird the way that works. Um, it has like four layer capability. It's a four input switcher. The, it's not a bad little box. It's got a little SDI card to record onto. I just don't think that it's a company that's been around long enough for people to trust hundred percent yet. I think they're only like a year and a half old, two years old, the company. Mike, um, is that the one like the Pearl? Uh, it sort of looks like a pearl in a way. It's yeah. basically like a little seven inch monitor and it's, yeah, it's got the little metal frame that's angled like the yeah. pearl. Um, to me, the pearl is way, way overpriced for what it is. The pearl is so expensive. It's ridiculous. Um, I actually, I actually have a dealer's license with Epifan and to do the pearl and everything. And I, everybody I, I try to sell to, they're like, no way they're not, they're not going to buy it. Um, I know a certain AV company that bought a bunch of them starts with a p uh we all know who they are um and it's just yeah i've never liked the pearl system at all to me it's not the quality that my clients expect uh if you get results out of it great use it i'm not saying you know i i'm the way i am is buy what you want use what you want if you get somebody to pay for it even better um i just know that i came from the broadcast industry so i use broadcast gear um i to me a lot of that stuff is like really you're missing this function like for example black magic a great example black magic does not make one complete camera why N nobody knows you know they brought out the pocket mini you know the the pocket 4k 
Okay, first off, micro four thirds is not a great lens factor. You want a larger lens, you want a larger chip, go with EF, it's bigger. Um, but you come out with this camera and you call it a pocket camera, it doesn't fit in a pocket. Uh, then you give me an XLR that is not a full-size XLR. Who in the world in audio carries a mini XLR with them? And then you only give me one XLR. So at all this stuff that's coming out, there's tons of new products coming out all the time. There's uh, another company in, um, I think they're out of Thailand. They just came out with a box that looks exactly like a decimator. The only difference is it's got a five inch LCD screen on it and it's got all the different um, scopes built into it. And it's like 150 bucks for this box. It's got HDMI in, SDI in, HDMI out, SDI out. And it's like 150 bucks, five inch little screen, touch it. You can change your, you know, the resolution. You can do test patterns, whatever it is you want with it. And it's like, okay, but the decimator is a better product. It doesn't have a screen though. So there's so much stuff that's coming down the line. And now that uh, NAB was canceled this year, a lot of the emails I'm getting for new products is just uh, some of the stuff is insane. And I'm like, it really sucks that nobody can actually see this stuff yet because there's nowhere to view it or to preview it. I do know that NAB is trying to be 100% online streamed. Uh, they're way behind on it, you know, because there's so many Tell them stuff. to come here. We'll, we'll help them out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there is a couple of things on Facebook. Uh, somebody said something about LiveU Solo Plus. Okay. Uh, that basically is the SDI version. They call it the Plus. Um, and it's actually an accessory upgrade if you want to do it. If you have the HDMI SDI version, the plus is basically you get a bigger internal antenna. So what they do is they replace this bottom and these little legs will stick out a little longer. And what they do is they have internal antennas then. And you can take some SIM cards and stick it in there. And you don't have to worry about the USB modems on the outside. Okay. That's all it is. And then I got another one uh, yep. from Dean Robinson. It says, do you think NDI and Pearl systems will overtake LiveU, ATEM Mini, and Atomos, et cetera? No. No, not at all. And I'll tell you why. NDI is great if you're sending PowerPoint down the line. That's it. Uh, <laughs> cameras with NDI are terrible. Uh, I was talking to Omar and a couple of guys earlier before we started. NDI right now is not 100% solid. You're sharing bandwidth on a, a cable with everything else. The other thing is you can't sync cameras together. There's, there's, just, there's no way. It's right now, it's not there yet. Uh, NDI 5.0, which should be out hopefully before the end of the year. Uh, from the tests I've seen and from the little demo, the beta they sent me that I got to play with, it's getting there. It's not 100% there yet. Uh, when they get that issue figured out of the syncing the cameras together, then NDI will be really strong. I've used NDI. I don't like it because the fact is I can't sync cameras. Uh, that's my biggest issue with it. Uh, but I actually, we use NDI a lot for like PowerPoint, stuff like that. So we'll send it. Um, I don't know if any of you guys use vMix, but vMix has NDI built in. Uh, and it's great because I'll send, like we'll have a PowerPoint lady on the other side of the building. And we'll have her send us the PowerPoint through NDI into vMix. And it's clean because there's not really, it's just an image. It's not like it's 24 frames per second. So we don't have to worry about syncing because it's literally just an, a still image going through the line. The what was the other one? The what else were they asking about? They the full, what do you think NDI and Pearl system will overtake Live View? No, Pearl never. Um, I'll tell you why because Pearl's not mobile. This box is still online, even though it's not connected to anything, it's going through Wi Fi. I could take this box and walk around, I could throw it in my car and drive down the street, and you guys will still see the image. Pearl, you can't do that. Um, also Pearl is so expensive for what it is. It's just way overpriced. This is sub thousand dollars. You find me a Pearl that's under a thousand bucks. that does what this does. And I'll be like, let's go with it. But you're not going to find one. Um, the other thing is these guys update all the time and they give you the free update, which is nice. They're always doing research. Um, again, so is Teradek. So is a couple other companies. Um, to me, Pearl is a corporate device. It's not a broadcast device. I don't know of any production truck that has a Pearl system in it. I don't know of any TV station have Pearls in them. So uh, corporate world, go for it. If you like it, keep it. Awesome. I just personally don't use them. All right. And Jason, you got a question? Yeah. Uh, Mike, 
I know yeah. you've been doing this for years and years, and I know, mm -hmm. you know I've talked about it a million times with you. You saved the day when we had the client that threw extra live streaming uh, places uh, to us. I remember My that. You is coming from a background of live streaming and doing it for so many years. Mm -hmm. Where we're at right now today, how important is it to not only AV technicians that are in this realm, but also for people in production moving forward to understand not just buy a box, but understand how uh, big live streaming is going to be in the future, the near future. Uh, you want me to tell you how important it's going to be? It is the future. It is now. It's not going away. Exactly. Um, like I said, before the pandemic, we were doing experimentation with uh, a movie where we had an editor in LA, we had a director in New York, and the movie was being shot in Atlanta. And we were streaming back and forth between each location all in real time. And then the guy who collects all the, the video cards, uh, the data cards or the chips, or whatever you want to call them, the SD cards, the red camera cards, the Arri Alexa compact flash, he was putting in his computer system and we were uploading that directly to the guy in LA. So the guy in LA can do dailies. Now that was all streamed. That wasn't like, Oh, here's a hard line from here to LA. No, that actually was done through a system that live view is putting together. And once that's perfected, you'll see that on every movie set, because now with the pandemic, you don't have to have the editor on location. You get the editor sit anywhere in the country. You don't have to have the director there. Uh, matter of fact, the director was in New York and he was watching both camera feeds. And there was a little webcam where he can see like the whole set. And he literally halfway through said, cut, cut, cut. Okay. Move this guy over to the, you know, a little bit. And we were just like, wait a minute, how's he even seeing that? He was seeing it through a webcam. Um, so it's, it's definitely the way things are going to go. It's, if you think about it, okay. So now you just to have three people say, we'll say three people you don't have there on location that just saved money right there. So cost effectiveness, it's definitely going to help out now on the technical side of it. I say, learn as much as you can, because it's not going away. You know, H.264 has been around for a long time. H.265 is now out. They just finalized what H.266 is going to be. And that's where it's all going is H.266, which is 8K video streaming at a smaller bandwidth of, of H.264. And it's just, it's just going to go more and more. And now that Blackmagic dumped the 12K camera, you know, obviously we're just going to keep on getting more and more resolution and more and more bandwidth being usage. Right now, I was, it was something like the video usage on streaming right now is something like a million times more than it's ever been in the last 20 years. And I'm like, that's just insane to think. Because again, think about it. Every company is video streaming. You've got the sports are being streamed. You've got movies that are being streamed. Uh, Netflix is what? Nothing but streaming now, pretty much. I mean, they do. Uh, I think they still have the DVD option. I don't know. Um, you got Hulu, Amazon, Apple TV. It's all streaming. Now, I know that Hulu, Amazon, and um, Facebook are all working on live streaming with Live View. Live view has got, they're working out some deals with them so they can do like live shows, you know, where it's, it's actually streamed live on their content providers. So like, if you go to Facebook, they'll not, well, not Facebook. If you go to Hulu, Hulu is actually working on a game show right now. That's going to be live on Hulu. And then they'll rebroadcast it for a stream later on, you know, where it's restreamed later. But the fact that, that they're working into doing live streaming tells you it's not going away anywhere. It's, it's going to be here for a long, long time. And so, it's just going to get better every year. So has the latest solo you update messed with the live display of the incoming feed? If you go live on the web GUI, it only shows a message on the unit now rather than a preview of the video feed. Okay. What that is, is if you're using the GUI, the screen does get shut off. If you don't use the GUI, the screen is turned back on. It's anytime you're going into the website and using the GUI to program everything, they deactivate the screen. And uh, nobody, I don't know why yet. Um, I know it's been asked to them a couple of times for guys. I know, um, uh, who was it? They, uh, I, I actually, it was um, Robert Rodriguez. He's got a couple of units and he was asking them, why is that happen? And when somebody like that asks, you know, they're going to change it. So hopefully the next update will bring it back where the screen's live 24 seven the entire time. Yeah, I actually, uh, this week I was looking at the uh, live view uh, user forum or user mm -hmm. group on, on Facebook. And one of the things somebody had was that uh, they had started the stream on the web GUI 
and it locked up the they uh yeah. what was the they had a message that popped up and yeah. uh <laughs> yeah it it it's because they're using the GUI. That's why. And that will happen on every unit. It doesn't matter what it is from live view. For some reason, that was something they did in the last update. Uh, like I said, we hope that the next update, it gets rid of that. Uh, I th and the thing is with the GUI, the GUI will show you the video stream. And I think what they're thinking is that you're watching the GUI the entire time. So we'll just put it here instead of on the unit. I don't know. I just, I hope they bring it back on the next update. It'd be nice to have it. Yeah, the one thing I read as a solution was somebody said just push the button yeah. on the actual unit. Yeah, and you push the joystick button. Yeah, yep, and it'll open it back up. Yeah. yeah, it's it's sort of like a sleep mode. So they're basically what Live View is doing is they don't want the monitor on the entire time to save you battery power because they their their mentality was is you're a news reporter out in the middle of the field doing something and they don't they want you to have as much battery power as possible, battery life. So they deactivate the screen whenever you don't need it. So you got to click the little joystick to bring the screen back up. Don't hit the power button. <laughs> That's the start and stop button. Don't hit that. You won't hit the little joystick and it'll bring the screen back up. But the thing is, if you're going through the GUI, they deactivate all that service through that because they think you're doing everything through the GUI. That's why I say, just set it up, log out of the GUI and the box is ready to go. And then you always have it there. But if you, if you're at somewhere where you can use the GUI, I say use the GUI and I'll tell you why because the GUI has a lot more information than the box does. The GUI actually shows you a true spectrum of all the bandwidth issues that you're using. It shows you the LRT systems, shows you everything you need while you're doing it. So if you can use the GUI, I say do it. But if you're on location, like in the middle of the woods or something like that, don't use the GUI, just use the box, but don't have it going through the GUI and you'll get all the functions out of the box. Another question we yep. had was, um... What about mushroom networks? How will that affect the um, bandwidth that you're receiving? You mean like a mesh network? I think that's what he's referring to, yeah. Um, it has nothing to do with it because you're not on that same network. Okay. If you're using, if you're uh, using the cellular modems that LiveView has, you will never interfere with those frequencies. They're on a separate band that no public device can get a hold of. If you're going through the Wi-Fi, yes, you might be stuck on a mesh network and that might interfere a little bit, but I hope that you'd be having more than one connection if you're going through Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is never 100% stable. Uh, a lot of people, a question that's being asked a couple of times is, how will 5G internet capacity impact streaming in the future with the live use solos and the live use? Um, great question. And pretty much it's just going to make it better. That's it. 5G is super fast, and the tests I've seen with LiveView are really sweet. I know um, the 800, which is the new one that's coming out very shortly, they have uh, 5G modems already built into it. And all you got to do is just get the SIM card, stick them in, and boom. And you're doing 4K uncompressed at 60 frames, and it's a beautiful image. It really is nice. Uh, they, they had a, a red hooked up to it, and they were streaming it full-blown uncompressed right through it at 5G to a, another monitor, um, across the building and that monitor had a decoder that came in the receiver part of the uh the live use ecosystem and it looks so clean i was like wow that's awesome but yeah 5g is definitely going to help with anything when it comes to streaming the problem with 5g right now is there's no actual industry standard for 5g so you have where verizon has their version t-mobile has their version and ever since t-mobile and sprint combined together a lot of the Sprint customers that had the original Sprint 5G are kind of getting hosed on it because now they have to convert over to the T-Mobile 5G. So they all have to buy new hardware and that kind of stuff. It's not just a SIM card. You got to buy all new hardware, which kind of sucks. I feel sorry for those guys. Uh, Verizon's 5G is more of a longer distance where T-Mobile is more of a shorter distance. And then the other problem we have with 5G is you got all these lunatics that want to tear down the towers, <laughs> which we don't know why. Um, but it's definitely going to make the streaming faster. It's going to make it better. Higher resolutions are going to go through. It's just, it's nothing but a, a good thing coming down the line. It's just a matter of when is it going to be hundred percent implemented? I don't know. Andreas, you had a question. Yeah. Can I use the live view smart with, if I have an account or can I use, can I use live solo? straight to one of the live view 200s to the decoders or no do you mean like connecting live view to another live view or live view to another box yeah if i have, if i have a live view solo and i need to send it to one of the the trucks or one of the 
channels. Okay. The, yes, the, you can the use. Channel. Yeah, if if the truck or the TV station has the live view decoders slash receivers, any of the live view transceivers or encoders will work to those receivers. Yes. So the solo can be sent to one of those receivers, but they have to have the live view receiver or they can pick it up as a video stream through any content provider or any RTMP or any dedicated service that you put together. So it can be done. You yeah, just can't, of fact, you just can't go like a, like for example, you can't go solo to a 200, you know what I mean? Cause a 200 is a transmitter. It's not a receiver. Yeah. So as long as you've got a, a live view receiver, any live view transmitter can go to that receiver. Yeah, that's up right now. I know of uh, in Puerto Rico, they're using live view from the yep. field. Yep. To the to the TV channels just yes. for the basketball games and the baseball games. In uh, in Puerto Rico, they have the there's a lot of 200 series down there. There's a couple old 500s down there. I think there's like three 600s from what I remember. And each of the stations those guys are going to have uh, the dual or the quad channel receivers, because at the time they put Live View down there, they didn't have the eight channel one. I think I think there's an eight channel going down soon, from what I remember reading in the updates. Uh, but yeah, they have each station that's receiving it has a receiver at the station, and the solo can go to that receiver. So if you're in Puerto Rico and you want to sell the service to a station, you could. If you have the solo or 200 or 400, the 500 or 600, any of the product line will work. Nat, you had a question as well? Yeah, uh, Michael. So I, I've been thinking about a use case uh, for some clients of mine. I'm getting into helping people with sort of hybrid uh, destination virtual weddings. Mm -hmm. So not just the I'm on a, I'm your, I'm operating your Zoom call remotely, but right. I'm coming to you and helping you with something a little bit more. Uh, substantial and getting a good connection. So I've been thinking about when people want to go do what used to be an elopement on the beach, but now they want to bring in some friends and family for part right. of the call okay. and they want to send it back, mm -hmm. right. Uh, to broadcast out um, yep. the show. That's uh, immediately uh, when hearing this, I'm thinking this is already like uh, an approachable price point that you could for higher end clients start to bring this in both as a, to transmit, but also from your offsite person who's like bringing in that, say it's a Zoom call with your bridal party where well, I'm receiving what's, it. What's really funny is that you say that is, um, I know of a company called Luxury Weddings and uh, they are using the Live View Solo to transmit their weddings to other family members that can't get there. And right. they just had a wedding like two weeks ago um, in St. Pete on the beach. As a matter of fact, it's pretty funny. <laughs> you say the beach and, um, they actually were streaming it out to a website that they basically gave everybody in the, the family or the wedding, the, the location of the website. And they built on the website, a chat room. And then what they did was, is um, the bridesmaid had an iPad. Then they received the chat that way through the iPad uh -huh. and they were sending messages back and forth. It wasn't true two-way video yet because they didn't, you know, the budget really wasn't there to do the two-way video. Uh, right. They basically, the solo is a one directional system. The 200 and the t and above is dual directional. So you could have a receive and a send. Uh, they didn't want to spend the money on the 200. So they bought the solo and uh, they actually throw it in their wedding packages. Now it's pretty cool. And uh, the woman that I, I work with over there, she was telling me that they've already reserved 15 more weddings because of that one wedding. Um, so that basically paid for the unit. It's paying their monthly fee every time they do a wedding. Cause she's doing like four weddings a month. Right. And she's like, I am so happy now that we're back in business and we don't have to worry about finding where 400 people are going to be or hundred people or whatever. It's basically a close knit family and anybody else who wants to watch it can watch it. And they throw it in a package deal with weddings. And she's like, this is the coolest thing. And literally, um, the system they have, they have this, they have the live view solo and they, he has the guy that's their videographer has this on his belt um because the belt clip on the back and uh he's got a camera that he runs the cable directly out to that and he just goes live and all the audio comes to him he's got a couple of lavaliers one on uh the the bride one on the groom he bought uh he had to buy a white lavalier i didn't know they made them i'm not an audio guy 
Um, he had to find a white lavalier and, uh, he was telling me that he had to, uh, paint the body pack because they did, it wasn't white or something. And I was like, okay, cool. So it matches her dress. And, uh, they did all this within like two weeks and it was just a fluke kind of thing they tried. And they basically sent the link to all these prospective clients they were having for more weddings. And the woman came back, should we already book 15 weddings within a week? And I was like, that's awesome. So it is possible. Uh, she already told me that she wants to see about investigating the higher end units to do the two way stuff for later on. Um, I basically told her, I, 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 I lent her one off the bat, uh, one of my units first so she can try it. And, uh, they tried it for a day and they came back and said, we're just going to buy one right now. We don't even have to borrow it. We'll just buy one. And, uh, they bought it and they love it and, uh, they're using it all the time. And like I said, the guy who's doing their video, he's, I think he's using, um, a Sony, uh, was it, uh, 7s or something like 7s2 or something uh, one of the sony's and uh he's got a little gimbal for it and he's just shooting really cool wedding stuff and they love it and he's having a great time they they're not losing business over the fact that it's a pandemic right now she said that she's gaining business because of it it's the incredible. um she was telling me that they're going to not just st pete but they're going to south carolina with it they're going to north carolina uh she said she has one in uh, like south dakota coming up in like a couple months so that's so, the other cool thing. She can go anywhere she wants with it. I'm a bit curious then about the receiver because it seems like that is an opportunity to do a little bit more tie-in with the what the yeah. bride and groom are bringing in of a, a caller, grandma, yep. whoever, a toast. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that unit, is that similar in size to the, uh, to the uh, solo? No, 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 no. The, the okay, receivers are, they're, they're rack-mounted systems. Uh, they... Okay. The, the two unit, um, the two receivers, a one RU, the four is a two RU and the eight, I believe the eight's also a two RU as well. Um, so if you needed to do a receiver on location, you just get a small little, you know, small little rack case, throw it in there and boom, get a power somehow. And you can do that. But um, I have one client that has, um, they bought a 400. And uh, the reason why they bought the 400 is because they wanted the two way video but they also wanted a couple other features that the other ones didn't have. So they wanted um, a tally light control. They also wanted to do teleprompter back and forth. Uh, and they put the receiver in their studio and then they put another transmitter from the studio. So they have one guy sits at the studio. They can be anywhere in the country, send it to the studio. The receiver picks it up and then they can resend it out, you know, to wherever they need to. Right. So it's, it's a very expandable system you not locked in with just, Oh, I can only transmit. You can receive, you can do. Now the cool thing is, is once you get into the higher end units, they, there's an app you can download on your cell phone and you can actually do teleprompter from your cell phones. So you can like control the teleprompter. You can also do notes back and forth. You can do, um, they even have an IFB system. They even have clear comm through it. So you can have like, you know, if somebody's at the studio, they can be on headset talking to you back and forth saying, Hey, get the shot of this guy or whatever. So there's definitely different options with obviously with the higher end units. The solo is a great starting point. Um, it's pretty much, I got, the solo is the one I can definitely get the great deals for anybody on right away, because I know they're trying to get it more in the streaming market, more into the creator content market. Uh, the other ones they're trying to still stick it in with the broadcast guys, but doesn't mean you have to be in broadcast to buy one. You can do, you know, if you wanted to do on beach weddings with two way systems, they're not going to say no. They'll be like, oh yeah, we'll sell you one. But it's not, they're, they're not marketing to that industry. They're marketing the higher end units to broadcast. Um, the solo, literally, originally the solo was not even going to be available for the streaming community. It was never designed for the streaming community. But somebody over there said, hey, this thing's so small. Um, I was wearing a GoPro with the other day, walking around a you know convention. And they were like, what? And then they saw the footage and said, well, we can make this for the YouTube crowd. And then all of a sudden they were like, let's add all these other functions to it. So like, if you go to the 400, you're not going to see Facebook on there. You're not going to see YouTube. You actually have to add that on there. Whereas the solo already has it added to it. So the solo, they even says it was designed for creators, you know, um, but it still does broadcast quality. So I know some couple companies that are still using it for broadcast because again, it's, it's not that expensive. Well, if you ever want to sponsor a creator, you know, I'm more than happy. <laughs> uh, Michael, just ballpark. What yeah. what would the price difference be for like a 200 or a 400 compared to the solo? The 200 starts. Don't have a heart attack, people. It starts at $5,000. Okay. The solo starts at 999 but we're giving That's you guys not... a special deal. 
Um, the receivers start at four thousand dollars and go up. The dual band receiver, I think it's like forty one hundred dollars right now. The eight channel is somewhere in the twenty five thousand dollar range. But the nice thing about the receiving units is they're interchangeable. So they're modules. So if like, say you want to upgrade to 4k, you can pull one of the receivers out and make it a, throw a 4k in and boom, you're ready to rock and roll. Um, then you're just buying a card. You're not buying the whole brain or the whole rack system anymore. So that's a cool feature with that. The, I know that they're working on a 16 channel one. That's all integratable. So you can pull the cards out, put different cards in whenever you need, which will be really interesting. Cause I know a couple of trucks that want that, that are out there. Copy these send receive models uh mm -hmm. what is that uh, how does that change the recommended number of uh, modems like if it's two for a solo <laughs> okay more. that you're right you're right there definitely the higher the number the more modems you're going to need so for example the 200 usually you can work on two or four modems the 400 is eight modems maximum the 800 is like 20 modems maximum you know it's really crazy you don't need all those modems. It's just an option that you can have available if you want to use it. They recommend on like the 400, for example, they recommend where you have at least four modems to do send and receive, which makes sense. I mean, because yeah. you, you want to get that quality back and forth. A uh, buddy of mine does Steadicam out in California, and uh, he's got a 600 on his Steadicam rig, and he does live teleprompting off of his Steadicam. Um, they also do IFB and they do a program return. So on his steady cam, right above the monitor will be his little teleprompter and right below the lens would be a, a monitor for program return. So they can see the talent can see the other cameras. And, uh, he basically, uh, the 600 that we got him basically has an integrated battery system on it. So it just snaps in place where the battery on the back of the camera is. And there's a small little SDI jumper. Then you can put the battery on the back of that. So it's in line between the camera and the battery. So for him, it's not really that big of a deal to be in, in, inside of that. So there are different options. Again, it just depends on what you want to do with it. You know, I always tell people, if you're just streaming, go with the solo. If you want to get into doing the multi you know, send and receive and all that, you're definitely going to want to look at the other systems, definitely. And so yeah, a couple so, of... Go ahead sorry, on. real quick. Just yeah. uh, so everybody knows, we're about the last 14 minutes left of the uh, eight of the show here. So no problem. if we haven't answered your question yet on the commenting side, please put them down there now so we can get to them uh, so we don't miss it. If we do miss it, I apologize. Uh, we will get with Michael after the fact and see how we can uh, answer those yeah. questions for you after the fact. Um, but just a quick reminder, we are at the last 15, so we haven't answered your question yet or we haven't gotten to it. Uh, you guys are doing fantastic on the Q&A side. I lo I'm loving it. This is exactly how we like to do it. Um, but please, if we forgot it or missed it, just add it to the comments now at the bottom and we'll, we'll, get, uh, we'll catch up to it now. And um, again, Omar, if you guys ever want me to come back and talk about other products, let me know and I'll bring on something else for you guys. Like I said, literally I literally have an entire chat going on right now about part yeah, two of this. <laughs> no problem. I mean, like uh, I've got, we can work out if anybody's interested in vMix, I can definitely work out some killer deals on vMix for you guys as well. Um, Atomus product lines and that kind of stuff. Let me know. I mean, I, like I said, I, I work with Atomus. I've got their whole product line. I, I know more about it than I really should, but I mean, it's a simple thing. Um, matter of fact, Atomus sponsored my camera cars. <laughs> uh, one of my camera cars has Atomus monitors in it. I've got a 19 inch Sumo Atomus monitor, recording monitor in the back of one of my camera cars. So I do know about the product line very well. Um, but yeah, for today, we're just doing live view and streaming. So if anybody's got any questions, please feel ask anything. So a couple faces, it's two people ask this pretty much the same question. Okay. Um, it's basically. The so one person said that Teradex Systems GUI uh, offers a live video preview mm -hmm. of the stream. Will the live mm -hmm. view offer something same, similar to that? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, in the GUI, um, here, let me bring it back up, uh, and I'll show you guys where it actually will be in the GUI. Um, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Um, here, I'll bring it back up in one second. Let me just reload it up. Okay, so... This is your GUI. So here would be, this is telling you what your input status is. Right here would be a chart of the actual bandwidth you're using. Down here where destination is, this right here will pop up a window of what you're seeing coming through the unit itself. So you'll have a live video feed right here 
of what's going out to the world. Um, so, I mean, literally you can have it all there. It's not a problem. It's, it's a very simple GUI. It's probably actually easier than Teradex GUI. Um, I like, like I said, I have Teradex systems. I like a lot of their stuff as well. I've got a bunch of their bolt systems. I've got some of their video systems. The video go to me just seemed to be, I have one, I use it. I have a client who demands me to use it. Um, I just think the pricing of it is a little bit mm, weird. It's, I don't think I should have to pay per gigabit of everything I stream. That's just me. But I make that client pay for it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, of course, as soon as we asked for more questions, tons of them came in. So Not I a problem. I know what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be bringing Michael back uh, very soon. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, that's just, because we uh, because you mentioned VMix a, a little while ago, just uh, want to mm -hmm. let everybody know because there are a couple of VMix questions coming up. We are mm -hmm. having a, an AV Tech Talk about VMix on August 24th. So a couple weeks from now. Um, we've got a couple of other things lined up. Uh, Omar, maybe if you want to... Uh, uh, queue up i think you have the schedule if you can uh just get ready so that we can let everybody know uh we will be posting event pages soon um the best way to find out and to keep up with us is to go like the av educate page like and follow and then do that thing on facebook where you make it like uh, a priority so that you actually get fed that and then you'll know when we go live we go live every monday here at 7 p.m eastern time uh in the u.s um we're also open to uh, accepting your ideas for shows. We have the basically the month of August lined up. Uh, we're putting together September right now. So if there's some topic you want, uh, whether it's Michael talking about it or not, because uh, apparently he can talk about anything. So uh, <laughs> he sells it all and he knows it all. It's great. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. I actually don't really sell it for a living. I just get deals that I can pass on to other people. I mostly do research and development for the companies. I don't have a warehouse full of all this gear to sell. <laughs> um, literally, if you order something through me, I'm sorry to say it's not in stock right this second, but I can tell you exactly when you'll have it in your hands. I do free shipping. Um, you're, I'm not making any money off you guys, really. I'm not. I'm literally just passing off what I do. I get paid to do research and development. You know, I Somebody will send me a product and a check and say, what's wrong with this product? And I tell them. So uh, I'm not here to make tons of money on you people or anything. It's I already know. I'm not, I'm not b and I'm not Adorama. <laughs> um, I just, I don't have a warehouse to store at all, but I can definitely get you anything you guys need pretty much. Great. Um, except for you do have that box of inventory of that. Of the older technology. Yeah. We, no, no, we no, had no, a few. Nope. 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 No, 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 no. It's, a, it's no, already, it's already been claimed. Yeah. <laughs> go there. A yeah. The guy, your IT guy wants it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. No, I've, I've got some boxes that, I mean, it's, like I said, I've gone through all these different things over the years and I just look at it and go, ah, it's a toy, throw it away. That's junk, throw it away. And the problem I found with a lot of these systems is, is you have to plug them into a computer. And if your computer's not fast enough, it just bogs everything down. You see this thing? It, it can handle it. Trust me, that, I will play with everything. No, that's great. I just, like I said, <laughs> I like I like the box, the, the box that does it all. You know what I mean? The box that'll do the streaming for you. I'm not arguing with that. I don't I'm have to worry to about a computer, that. you know? But, so, uh, uh, Michael, no, just so you know, yeah. in the in the chat, we're getting uh, from Rob, uh, Evan, great session. Thanks, very informative session. Oh, you guys are welcome anytime. Uh, and if Dean, like I said, anybody got any questions, just let me know. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, you can get a whole – Omar's got all my contact info if you need it. And yeah. uh, like I said, I'm working with Omar to make you guys some deals and some other stuff coming up. So if you guys have a product you're looking at that you guys want to get and – you know, if enough guys want it, I'll see about getting to the manufacturer and say, hey, what kind of deal can we make these guys? Because uh, a lot of these manufacturers, they pretty much kind of listen to me. I'm kind of a pain in the ass to these people. I basically knock down the door and say, hey, I'm going to learn your product, you know. And uh, I work with them, and then I turn around and give you guys the, the deals on them. There's a couple of guys out there I've gotten products for already. Uh, one guy I know, he just can't wait, so he goes to Amazon instead of coming through me, and that's fine. Um, I don't mind. You don't have to buy anything through me. Like I said, you can go anywhere you want. Um, I know there's those times you need it tomorrow and I, sorry, I can't do that for you guys, but I can definitely get you deals and stuff. And I uh, think, uh, Henry had a question. Yeah. What's up? He was Henry. You still there? Or did we yeah. I'm here, I'm here. Um, when on camera, let's say if I'm in Cali, uh huh. 
and I want to send it to uh, an office in Denver. Okay. What would they need over there in Denver? Besides me being in Cali with the live view on the camera, what would they need over there again? I must have missed that. There's multiple ways to receive it. You can either mm -hmm. buy a receiver from live view, which I can okay. get you a deal on that mm -hmm. as well. Or you can just have it be sent to them through any RTMP or any website or any video server you might have. Um, I've got my own private dedicated video streaming server for video streaming. So I actually have an, I have a, a web guy that can build a GUI system for my clients. And he basically, we can send them to there where nobody else will see it. Um, I always recommend if you can do a username and password on stuff, definitely build something that way. But you can do something as simple as send them a link to YouTube, Facebook. It just depends on how you want to get it to them. You know what I mean? Um, you don't have to buy a receiver. I will be honest with you. Some receivers are expensive on the system. Like I said, they start around four grand for a receiver. Uh, I have a receiver that we have sent out to other locations, you know, for different clients. Um, good example, Southwest. Uh, they needed to have the receiver in one of their offices. So we had to send them a receiver and a technician to go with it to operate it. And then we had two other locations out in the field. One was California, one was Houston. And then we sent it to them in New York. And they basically had a little video conference type of thing with a switcher and they had a little screen and they had a couple people watching back and forth kind of stuff. So it is possible. Uh, it just depends on how you want to get it to them. And it's how creative you want to be on how to get it to them. That's why okay, you tell cool. people. Appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, no problem. You're welcome anytime. Great. Uh, any last questions from the panel? There's a lot still on the Facebook that we will, uh, like we said, we will get with Michael and uh, yeah, we'll do no our problem. best to, to get those answered. Um, and, uh, you know, Michael, I uh, put your info, uh, put your links in the chat. So if people want to reach out directly, uh, they they'll be able to find your website and your Facebook. So yeah, here I'll if, put it right now on the uh, on the Zoom. Yeah, we just I've been sharing them uh, throughout the talk. So you, no if problem. you all of a sudden have six million uh, Facebook <laughs> requests, don't blame no, us. Not a problem. And like <laughs> I said, um, even today they lowered the price on the package deal for the HDMI model for you guys. They went from 900 down to 875 for you guys. Right. So and just to talk about that for cool a thing. second um, to, so the, what Michael's talking about is you go to the AV educate page, like, and follow. And the information for that is on that page. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we need to update the, we may have to update the graphic with the new pricing. Not a problem. Uh, cause, Cause it was just lowered today by $25. So, uh, great deal, but you got to make sure you go to the AV Educate page because that's like our our friends and family uh, deal here going on. So please, please go do that. Um, yeah, you, they have to be an AV Educate member to get the discount. Yep. And I will definitely, if anybody's buying anything from me, um, I will definitely confer with Omar to make sure that they are part of the, your guys' family great. Um, so they can get that discount. Yes. And then that's going to be the best way that you're going to find out about more of the AV tech talks. Mm -hmm. uh, Omar, did you pull up the schedule? Do you want to talk about next week real quick yeah, before we sign so, off? Without giving out the names of the, you know, the special guests we have, uh, August 3rd will be, uh, that's today. I'm sorry. August 3rd is live you. Uh, the 10th will be millennium. M M M oh, Malumen. Malumen. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the 17th or Monday, August 17th will be uh, networking one oh one. And Actually, so he, hold on, wait. I want to talk about networking because um, Justin, who's going to lead that, he sent me his uh, description today, which I haven't had a chance to send over to you. But the title he has for it is amazing. So I'm going to pull that up. Uh, if you want to... Uh, <laughs> hold on. It's it's like phenomenal because he didn't want to call it Networking 101. He didn't want to sound like LinkedIn. We're not doing that. Uh, his talk is data networks for production fundamentals tips and traps okay if if that doesn't sound awesome then i don't know what does so i like it i like it yeah i'm and stoked the, about that the last one for the month is a vmix class on august uh 24th which is again monday right uh, 07 we have gotten your comments by the way uh from ireland uk and australia about the time changes we'll have a discussion after this and see if we can make something happen uh for everybody involved in ah that's community. a good uh, i didn't know we were so popular in the uk so uh we will have to figure that one out um i think also uh omar august 31st i think that's when i'm going to do the uh audio because we did that was the one 
That's the, the last Monday of August. Yeah, so August 31st is when I'm going to do the audio one that I've been promising for a little over a month. Uh, so <laughs> we'll make sure that one happens. Um, I was I was going to do it today, but now I'm glad that I bumped myself uh, because this was such a great informative talk. Uh, so much engagement. Uh, very happy to have Michael here. Um, oh, thanks for having me, guys. Oh, and I'm very glad, Ed. Thank you very much Let for me... calling. Just well, so you guys so... know, I, I called Ed. I was like, hey, uh, can we change your talk around? <laughs> So sorry, he's sharing those. Oh, he called it out. So just so you guys know, uh, Dave, not in the uh, in the comments right now, is leading that class uh, next week. Great. If you'd like to uh, participate, that is who is leading that class. I wasn't gonna give names out, but he he gave himself a shout out. So awesome. Great. So with that, it's about it's just after nine p.m. on the East Coast in the U.S. here. Um, since now, I guess now that we have international people watching, we have to clarify what time it is. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for, for joining us, uh, today for AV tech talks. We're here every Monday, 7 PM, uh, Eastern standard time. Um, oh, we, I don't think we heard from Justin today. I, I see his thumbs up, but I didn't get to hear from him today. I'm here. Can you hear there me? There we go. Your your setup has gotten pretty cool. It's advanced overnight. It I, I'm at my on my actual base camp today. I was kind of lazy last week. Awesome. So awesome. just Justin, can I can I tell the community what you're going to do for us in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, go for it. So Justin has graciously uh, accepted the uh, role to train you guys or to educate you everybody here on the stream deck and the pie you guys had overwhelming comments about that and how to do oh, it and set it up and just cool. agreed to lead that class for us uh so we're still working on some dates right now because obviously we already booked this month but he had no hesitation to do that he's been a great participant great panelist uh so if you guys don't know who this gentleman is you're definitely gonna figure that out in a few weeks uh he'll be leading that class for stream deck and pie so look out for that one as well because he's uh very knowledgeable in that and he was awesome setup he had even though Apparently that was an improv two setup. It was an awesome setup where he was able to switch live for us and everything um, when Nate was doing his presentation, which Nate murdered it. I mean, amazing job, amazing execution. Uh, BitFocus shared that one uh, literally as soon as we were done streaming it. So that was awesome, man. I really appreciate that. I right, appreciate the panels here, obviously, always. Uh, Nate for being here, Andres for being here, uh, Henry for being here, Jason and Justin, thank you so much for coming back, guys. We appreciate you here all the time, every time. Of course, to the, to the host ourselves, right? Thank you for me. Thank you for Bodie. Thank you for Ed here for uh, for putting this all together, taking your times out of your family and your friends. Um, you know, I know this is a new new norm for us all, and we have family and friends, and we're all home more and with our kids and everything. So, you know, thank you for uh, your professionalism and and doing these awesome streams with me and with everybody else and with the community. And uh, I hope to see you guys all next week. Now, and let's thank. I mean, thank the the people on Facebook for all yes. the questions. I mean, that's that's what really drives our show is all the questions that we get from you guys. Um, and we're happy to dive into whatever it is. So if you guys have topic ideas, um, you know, like I said, we're booked through August, but there's a lot more months coming up. So please send us your ideas, uh, message them to us, uh, put them in this chat. We'll try to look at them and, uh, you know, just let us know what you want to do. I just put the phone number link again. Uh, if you want to be part of our panel, there's a phone number you can text uh, and you can get the Zoom information so you can be in the room where it happens. Um, but, oh, and then do we want to let, uh, I'm sorry. I heard nope. something. Want yeah. That's help? somebody's family's there. Yeah. Yep. My little, my little guy <laughs> just came home. So there you go. The new norm, the new norm. Yes. Yep. Uh, Michael, you want to close this out and uh, give a little shout out. You have anything else you want to say to the community? Um, well, once again, thanks for having me out, uh, be part of this part. Uh, I had a good time. It was fun. And um, like I said, anybody's got any questions or anything, please feel free to get a hold of me anytime. Um, I'm always, like I said, I'm going to work with Omar and try and get you guys better deals on uh, hardware out there and maybe some software packages. Uh, Cause I, I know it's, it's definitely going to be, it's hard. A lot of guys aren't making any real money right now. And I feel sorry for what's going on with a lot of guys. And uh, like I said, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I'm definitely lucky in the fact that I've got clientele that 
are not shutting down tomorrow or anything like that because I work a lot with military and the government and stuff like that. So I'm in a lucky situation and I'm very uh, grateful for what I've been able to do. And I'm definitely, I'm very willing to help out with anybody needs any help or anything. Got any questions, please feel free to ask anytime. Uh, best thing is get a hold of me on Facebook. And if I get time, I'll answer as soon as possible. There's, I do know of other products that are coming out. I just, I'm sorry, I can't tell you what it is because I don't want to lose my deals with these companies, but it's definitely not going away. There's so much coming down the line. Speeds are going to get faster. Wi-Fi is getting faster. Cell is getting faster. Learn as much as you guys can. Seriously, if you know anybody in the business knows anything, just ask questions because you'll be better off in the long run the more you know about what's going on with this stuff. And um, really cool that Omar and his buddies put this stuff together for you guys. Uh, this was not around. I mean, I didn't even know you guys were really out there. A buddy of mine told me you guys were out there and I looked at it and I was like, look at some of the stuff. And I went on and answered some of the questions and, you know, I know some of the terminology and Omar's like, Hey, wait a minute. And uh, I started talking to him and Omar's a really cool guy. And I want to thank him for his military service. I do a lot for military veterans and stuff. And um, I personally couldn't get in the military. I'm 100% colorblind, but I'm a video engineer. Is yeah, that's I know it's weird. Um, the but biggest like I said, oxymoron of the night. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I know audio guys that are deaf, so what do you expect? But um, like exactly. I said, <laughs> yeah, But huh? like I said, yes, always true. learn, guys. I mean, that's that's where you want to be. You want to you want to be learning. You want to know what's going on, because that's how you're going to get the work. And I tell everybody promote what you can and who you can and like i said if you don't know something and you know somebody who does ask them to help you out the guys will help i mean i know a lot of guys in business will help you out i mean i have no problem answering questions like i said jason's called me a couple of times asking questions while he's on jobs and i'm sitting there going hold on a second i'm on the you know i'm in the middle of like filming something or whatever and i'll answer the phone and i'll talk to him and say hey man what do you need and i'll help him out and i don't i don't charge him for it I should because he calls me more than he should. But no, Jason's a really cool guy. He's very funny. Um Did Jason yeah, recommend like, us? Was that was that who recommended us? Um uh no, actually, uh who recommended you? Uh Mangello, Robert Mangello, uh Bobby. Oh, Mangello, all right. Yeah. Bobby, Bobby uh, said, Hey, check this out. I was like, okay, and I've known Bobby for years. Uh matter of fact, this is how old I am. I worked on American Gladiators. And when they came to Florida, we hired Bobby to do the 3D. Yeah, we hired Bobby to do the 3D animation, by the way, on a video toaster. <laughs> so uh, if you want to talk about old technology, that's an old technology. But uh, now, like I said, anytime anybody's got a question, please feel free. Text me on uh, Facebook. Let me know what's going on. And uh, I usually answer pretty quick. Uh, I'm sorry I can't answer the phone all the time because I'm in the middle of a shoot. I don't answer the phone at all. Um, I do kind of follow up on the latest technology i always look at what's going up what's going on new i do go after companies and say hey i want to know about this product uh you got to be gung-ho sometimes and go after them uh for example atomus i went after those guys and said hey i want to know your product from head to toe and i've been with them for 10 years now so like i said there's there's a lot more coming out so please just keep on learning keep on promoting i'm not an audio guy i promote audio guys all the time when somebody goes hey can you get audio for it yeah call this guy. I'm not an audio guy. I'm not a lighting guy. I do solely video stuff. And that's where a good portion of streaming is going to be. You um, Don't just stick with OBS. Learn other software. Learn how Adobe has stuff that you know can be incorporated in it. Google has streaming services. Microsoft, everybody does. Learn it all you can, guys, because Zoom is not always the best way. I mean, we, I understand you're using it for this type of stuff. My clients can't use Zoom because of security issues. Um, so I had to build stuff custom and I say, just learn as much as you can. Please don't stop. Please keep on learning from these guys. Um, I know that uh, the IT stuff is very important. It's uh, probably one of the more important things of any of this stuff. Because I always tell people, think of the video stream as your video projector. You know, instead of a projector, it's going out to the world. The only difference is you need to know IT. So whoever's doing this IT class, Definitely watch this thing. Learn from them as much as you can. IT is a big part of it. I had to hire an IT guy just so I can get my video streams out to where I need to. And he, I mean, he's working all the time right now, setting up websites, setting up servers. His business has gone sky high because of the streaming. And IT is a big part of it. If you don't have a good connection or how to know how to network stuff together, you're not going to get your video stream out to the world. So please watch the IT guy, learn as much as you can. And just keep it up, guys. This is an awesome system. I mean, you're not paying to learn how to do this stuff from people. 
you're learning from other people in the business that are willing to help you guys out, just take advantage of it. Ask questions, learn. 100%. I mean, I, thank like you I said, so much for that. Oh no, yeah. Omar, you, I mean, you, you guys did a great, awesome job putting this together. I'm sorry. I couldn't get into some of the other streams earlier. I was actually working. Um, I, this is like my first Monday off in months because I normally do a Monday stream with the army and it's like, we finally got a day off. So that's why I'm here. But now, and again, if you guys ever need me to come back, please let me know. I'm willing to come back and help out some more. Like I said, there's so much more out there. We will definitely modify it. A day oh, yeah. for, just Not for a you. problem. Omar, you keep up the awesome work, man. You definitely do an awesome job. I appreciate it. Um, never you. met Mike. you. Never met you in person. Talked to you online a couple of times. And I knew right off the bat, you are a guy who wants to learn and wants to work. And um, I like that about you, man. And I know the fact that you did the service. Thank you so much, man. And, Thank uh, you for that. I appreciate you're a veteran a and I have no problem helping you out anytime you want, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that. I, anytime, I just want to let everybody man. know that the real boss is here now, though. So I think Who's the, the real boss, boss wants us to get off. Oh, the real oh. boss. JP. Ed's, he, Ed's the boy. Boss. Yeah. And, and I have a boo boo on my. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Can you say good night, buddy? Can you say good night, everybody? Good night, everybody. Good night. good night, little man. Good night, buddy. Good night. Good night. Have a good one. I think that's our cue, guys. We're done. We're done. The boss. Awesome. Said well, Mike, well, Mike, one thing, Mike. Yeah. Are, you lo are you local in, in Florida? I'm in Orlando, started. Florida. I'm when in Orlando. When are you do training classes? When am I going to do training classes? For yeah. you, never. <laughs> um, hey, if you guys organize something through Omar, let me know, and um, I'll help you guys out. I can train you on anything you need, pretty much. You know, Henry. Once, once, uh, you know, the pandemic's gone, we'll start doing live. We'll start doing live stuff again. All right, I'll hold you to that, that, Mike. I got you. Nah, not a, well, Jason. You, you bug me all the time. What are you talking about? He calls you more than your wife, probably. I don't have a wife. <laughs> Oh, then you messed up then. Dude, you can ask Jason. You come to my place, it's nothing but technology wall to wall in my place. Okay. Yeah, right. there, there's yeah, like yeah. there's nowhere to move without hitting some form of technology. Okay. Yeah. And uh yeah, um, and that's what happens when you get a wife, it all goes away because that's how my house was before I got married. Hi, Papa. <laughs> if we don't see I think uh, we're, Brody uh, next we're week, into... we know what happened. She saw the exactly. I love my wife. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's put that up here now. I love my wife. Hold on. So, uh, so it's uh, uh -oh. Oh, all right, guys. Why don't we? Uh, Mine's coming in now too. Why don't I gotta go? It's coming in. It's a good why don't we say goodbye to? Uh, let's. Mine's got, mine's got the angry look. Bye. All right, let's say Bye. goodbye to Facebook. Uh, Have a good Facebook. Thank you, I'll put everybody. Up, thank you, everybody. I'll put a price list again for you guys. Just in case. Excellent. Yeah, well, I'll put that up while we say goodbye to Facebook. My sister-in-law is about to hurt somebody over there. <laughs> I see her. I know. We see her. Getting a dirty look. 